friends. Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. I love noodling. You know me. And I could do that all day long. And my friends, we are going to have an absolute blast here today. An absolute blast. And this is what we're going to do. You're here to either learn lots of stuff today or win a guitar or win some sort of prize or both. And I'm happy about that. Okay. We're going to learn a ton of stuff today. Let me tell you the, the, the rundown. Basically what we're talking about today are the, are five steps that will allow you to play thousands of songs. I was going to say millions of songs, but I knew folks wouldn't believe me, but it is truly millions of songs, but the five steps that will allow you to play thousands of songs, no matter where your playing ability is at today. And I promise that at the end of this broadcast, which will be approximately one hour, I'm gonna to try to stick to my schedule as much as I can. Basically, we're gonna do a one hour live broadcast where I'm gonna do step by step teaching you how to do this, that if you know these five steps, you're absolutely going to be able to learn thousands of songs very easily through my videos, through whoever's videos on YouTube, you're gonna have the tools that you need to be able to do this, okay? And then at the half hour mark, we're going to be doing a few giveaways, a few Twitter winner giveaways, Twitter winners. And then at the end of the broadcast, at the one hour mark, we're going to be doing more Twitter winners. And then we're going to be giving away lots and lots and lots of stuff. Okay. So um, first off, uh, if you're not at, in fact, I'm going to go there right now myself. Um, I have Facebook and YouTube open, but I need to go to uh, the other program as well. So this is what, you do this with me. Go to yourguitarsage.com, do it with me right now, slash live, 
Ready? Here we go. We're typing together. Bam. Now, why would you want to go there? I'm telling you, you want to go there for several reasons, okay? Number one, I've got a PDF that I've created for you. You're going to see it right underneath the video where I'm doing this, okay? Right underneath that guy, you're going to see uh, download PDF. You're going to click that. You're going to download that because that's going to help you after the broadcast if you haven't done that already. Also, that is the only chat that I'm going to be looking at. I won't be looking at Facebook chat and I won't be looking at YouTube chat because I don't have three monitors set up. I have one place that I'm gonna be looking at all those chats. So if you want to get those questions answered, get in that chat, okay? Number one, now, it has a max of 250 people, so you just gotta wait till someone jumps out and then hit and then jump right in. That's what you gotta do. And you can sign in with your Facebook or Twitter, doesn't matter. Um, so that's why you wanna be there also, Friends, we've got some massive discounts today. I mean, massive discounts. If, if my stuff wasn't already priced right, it's even cheaper today, okay? More affordable today. So go there. Um, reviews, giveaways, um, everything is right there at yourguitarstage.com slash live. So make sure you go there really quickly. Um, so I'm gonna give you the rundown. Um, <clears throat> You know where to go, do that. Um, I'm looking at my, my my cheat sheet here. The giveaways, let's talk about the giveaways. Uh, a lot of folks know that I'm gonna be giving this away, but we're gonna work from, from, the, from the lower priced items on up. So on Twitter, if you're at yourguitarstage.com slash live right now, uh, there's a little bit that you're going to see just to the right of the video. And basically you're gonna cut and paste that where it says five steps to playing thousands of songs down to hashtag YGS live. You're gonna cut and paste that into your Twitter, okay, into your Twitter and release that into the universe and let folks come on by and learn a bunch of stuff today and maybe win something, okay? So we're gonna pick six winners for that. Those six winners are going to win an ebook bundle from me. And ebook bundles include three ebooks. I won't go into all the details. For more detail about my ebooks, you can check that out on my website. Okay, four power packs. Let's talk about it really quickly. Four power packs are going to include uh, a dragon's heart pick, a personalized dragon's heart pick. In fact, they'll actually engrave it for you and put your, let's not even worry about the pictures. Just go ahead and hit stream again and make sure we're live on both channels. All right, folks, we should be up and running again. That happens sometimes when we throw up an image. And uh, so there you go. Um, that's the fun of, of doing live shows. We won't do those images, okay? Um, so here's what you're gonna win. Four power pack winners. Uh, give me okay if we're, we're live on both, Chris. Yeah, we should be good. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so, Dragon's Heart Pick, personalized. You're also, these four winners of these four power packs are also going to win Vibe Strings. These are the strings that I use on my acoustic guitar, Stellar Strings. Um, an Capo by X Guitar X, one of these. We're going to be talking about that today because we're going to be using one a lot, so I'm going to keep that right here. And um, what's the last thing they're going to win? What's the last thing they're going to win, Chris? Fourth item. You hear me, Chris? Say again. What's the fourth item they're going to win? Picks, capo, oh, a tuner. Tuner, sorry about that. I, I don't have the images in front of me here, so that's why. So a tuner by Uber Tuner. I have reviews for all that stuff. You can check those out underneath the video at yourguitarstage.com slash live. So four winners are gonna be winning that. And then we're gonna do, oh, here are, the big, here are the big prizes, ready? Four winners are going to win lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. This is my mammoth course that everybody's joining. It's $400 normally, so we're giving away $1,600 worth of those. Four winners are going to win that, and some lucky winner is going to win the grand prize of this beautiful 50s classic custom shop Stratocaster, my personal Stratocaster with hand-wound pickups. I've been using this one for a few years now, and I absolutely love it, but it's time to find another home, and I love doing these broadcasts, and you know me, I love giving this stuff away. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, am, I on, am I on time here? Yes, I am. Um, and so we're going to be doing all that at the end of the hour. At the half hour mark, I'm going to be doing six or three Twitter winners, and at the end of the hour, we'll be doing three other Twitter winners and then all the rest, okay? Um, and I think that's everything. Yes, uh, go ahead and obviously share the video, like, love, do all that stuff if you like what I'm doing here. And without further ado, we're at the 10 minute mark. Here we go, ooh, I'm on time. All right, so these, you know me, the way I like to teach is I take out the stuff that you don't need to know. 
right now. And I give you the stuff that really you're going to know, need to know right now, leave out the other stuff, okay? It's not that we're skipping it, we're just coming to it when it's more appropriate, okay? I'm not going to show my two and a half year old how to jump a ramp on his tricycle or on a bicycle or BMX bike when he hasn't ridden his tricycle yet, okay? So steps, we're talking about steps here and this is one of the most crucial things. If you've ever felt frustration about guitar, it's because you're not doing steps. You're not working up in logical steps. Bottom line, that's the problem with everybody's frustration on guitar is they're trying to do too much at once and they don't have a set plan. It's really easy to do if someone lays it out for you. That's what I do, okay? So, with that being said, um, you know, no matter what your playing ability is today, I don't care who you are or how badly you think you suck, everybody thinks they suck in the beginning, and the people that don't think they suck, they suck too in the beginning, because that's the progression. Everybody's not good at something in the beginning. It's the way it works, okay? We start at, at zero. Uh, this is where Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, Joe Pass, uh, name it. Name your, the best guitar players of all times. They all started at ground zero, a place that we all start from. And they don't have any other abilities other than, than, than what we have, other than just time and practice. And when you put time and practice, and you multiply those two, and you do it in mass quantities, then you become great. You become Zach Wilde, you become uh, Jakey Lee, you become these great guitar players, okay? So, set your mind at ease, I promise you. I've taught thousands, do you hear me? I've taught thousands of students, I have never once seen this not true. So either I'm just really friggin' lucky, and I've never come across someone who was unteachable, except for somebody who was lazy and didn't practice, but I've never found somebody who was unteachable. I don't care if they think their hands are small, arthritis, I've got arthritis, jeez, I've got arthritis in five of my fingers. Uh, bitten by dogs, uh, nearly had this finger taken off, you know, uh, I could go right down the list. Django Reinhardt had two fingers that he played with and he plays faster than I could ever imagine playing. So, your ability, uh, doesn't matter if you're at zero today, we're going to learn this stuff. You're going to get through this, okay? Number two is, um, remember, if you haven't seen this video that I have already, think about this really quickly. I'll sum it up as quickly as I possibly can. Think about a guy at a circus, a juggling unicyclist on a tightrope, okay? This guy's juggling, he's on a unicycle, he's on a tightrope, and dear God, we don't want him to fall, but it's just so fascinating watching this guy. We go, how do you do that? That's impossible, da 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 da, -da. No, it's not impossible. It's the same thing with guitar. You see these guys, these girls playing, they're pointing at the crowd, they're laughing, look like they're just having fun, they're singing, looks like they're just effortless, right? How did that happen? Oh, it happened overnight. They were born that way. They came out of the womb with the guitar and they pushed it out and they're here, here I am, da 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 right? Nope. They practice, they practice, they practice. But what's more important in this scenario that we're talking about, the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope is, the guy didn't, didn't say, man, I think I can do that and get on a unicycle on a tightrope and do his thing and start juggling. Dear God, how many times would you have to do that before you stopped, right? And same thing as with guitar. This is why people quit guitars. They do too much at first and they don't do this in steps. And so they mess up. It's just inevitable that they're gonna mess up if they don't do the steps and if they don't practice. So what does this juggling unicyclist do? He learns how to juggle. With five balls? Nope, with two or one. And then he eventually gets to three and he does that separately. And then eventually he comes over from riding a bike and he, and he learns how to ride a unicycle. Okay, he does that separately. And then he says, well, I'm gonna learn how to walk a tightrope and he gets his proprioception as it's called, his balance correct so that he can walk on a tightrope. And one day he gets so good at doing all these things separately that he starts bringing two of them together. And he's kind of good at it, but it's still wonky. And then he gets those two down. Then he brings these two separately and he gets good at that. And then eventually he's good at doing two things at once. He brings in that third thing. This is what we're doing, folks. We're gonna be learning about fretting today. We're gonna learn about cording because it's, 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 there's a slightly different technique that's very, very, very important that we know that. We're gonna learn about the nine essential chords. Why nine essential chords? Because no one cares that you know thousands of chords. I don't care. I know thousands of chords, it doesn't help me anymore. Every now and then I may be able to grab a, a chord that, that I no, normally don't play, but really, re realistically, you can play millions of songs with nine chords. I swear to you, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I'm gonna show you how to use a capo because with the, those, those last two are actually in conjunction with each other. You can use these basic 
nine essential chords if you have a capo and you understand about transposition and how to transpose, okay? All right, without further ado, let's get into the first part of this. Am I on time? Man, I'm spot on time. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about here for say like the next, oh, seven, seven, eight minutes here is we're gonna talk about basic fretting technique, okay? All of this is covered in the PDF that you can download right now at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Folks that are on YouTube and Facebook that are watching me, love you. I really do. I can't even see your chat. Can't see, can't see it. So you'll want to head over there to yourguitarsage.com slash live and get that PDF because it's going to help immensely. The only thing you got to do is click on the link and boom, bingo, bango, jango. You got it, okay? So let's talk about this. This is all covered in the PDF. So you can, you can look at it later on. Pay probably better to pay attention to me right now and then look at the PDF later on. So really, there's a few simple principles, okay? And if you do these, you're going to, you're going to be using them all the time. I don't care what genre you're playing. You could be playing death metal. You could be playing jazz. You could be playing classical. It's all the same. We fret the guitar the same way, okay? So it's very crucial that you understand these few basic principles because this is where you're having problems when you're muting strings and not able to play notes. How do I know this? Because I've done this for a long time, okay? It's the only reasons why you might be having a problem. Not because you think your hand's too small. I promise, I have a video on that. So, number one, we wanna play on our fingertips, okay? And when we're talking about the fingertips, a lot of people think, well, this whole thing is the fingertip, you know, from that top knuckle up. Well, in the guitar world, it's not. As in, this is the pad of your finger right here, okay? So what I do with students, um, I actually have this, wasn't even planning on this, but what I do with students is I'll take a Sharpie pen when they just come into the, the studio for the first time, and I'll put a little dot like that right on their fingertips, right where that string should rest, okay? And as you can see, as I'm doing this, it's literally right at the tip of the finger, okay? Can you see this? Right at the tip of the finger. And so by doing this, it reminds me, it reminds the student. I don't need to be reminded anymore because I because I know how to do it. But if I'm playing and I'm seeing that dot look up at me, well, I don't care how how much motivation I have and how much positive thinking I have, it's not gonna it's not gonna fret right, you know? So you gotta get that dot on the fretboard. So in order to do that, you need to curl your fingers. So the first rule is fingertips. Fingertips, 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 fingertips. I added a new fingertips to it because I want, because it's important that you say it four times because you gotta remember, if you're not playing on your fingertips, with the exception of bar chords, if you're not playing those yet, don't worry about them. Um, you gotta be playing on your fingertips all the time. That's where 95% of the problems come from. Of all guitar playing, so that's the biggest thing. Make sure you're on your fingertips, okay? Now, how do you get to playing on your fingertips? You curl those knuckles. Do this in the air like you're gonna hi-ya karate chop somebody. You want each knuckle curled as to the maximum that you can possibly do it. This is just an exercise so that you understand that you can do it because I hear people say all the time, I can't do it. If I can do it, my hand's been mangled by dog bites and uh, arthritis and everything else, then you can do it, trust me. So do it maximum like that to where you're white knuckling. That's just gonna prove to you that you can do it. Then when you have your hands, when you're approaching the, the frets, and this is something that you're just thinking about right now in the beginning. I don't think about this stuff anymore and you won't once you get the basic technique down for the same reason that you don't ride a bike like this, oh, I'm gonna fall. You don't do that anymore. You did it the first day because you were getting used to it. So with that being said, fingertips, but curl this top knuckle, okay? The very top knuckle, you want that. If there's not a curl to that, you're gonna have issues. Make sure there's a curl there. So we got fingertips, we got curling that last knuckle. You also, you'll see a lot of guitar players, including myself, bring their thumb over the top of the neck like this, right? You'll see John Fushante do that, you'll see uh, Jimi Hendrix, you know, do this. And why? Well, because it's very comfortable. <laughs> Look at that thumb over the top of the neck, right? So I've got my thumb over the top of the neck and you're like, well, Eric, you're doing it. Why are you telling me not to do that? Because in the beginning, you don't want to do that. It's the kiss of death to your chords, to everything. Don't put your thumb over the top of the neck. Take that thumb, 
drop it down. And in fact, it's preferred that if you're on the, the lower part of the neck here. Why do that? Because look, if I, my hand's like this, how can I curl these knuckles? I really can't very well. Later on, as you get to playing more, you will be able to cheat like I'm doing and like a lot of guitar players do. Like every, pretty much every guitar player does if they've been playing for a bit, okay? So really important that you take that thumb, drop it in the back of the neck. <clears throat> Your hand is gonna get more fatigued doing that at first. It just for sure is because you're doing this, you're pinching like this instead of if you were to grasp a shovel, your, your palm is holding everything. But if you were to grasp a shovel like this, like pinch it like a crab, your hand is gonna get fatigued because you're having to press down so hard the whole time instead of grappling it like this. But in the beginning, you don't wanna do that, okay? I'm telling you, don't do it. Let your hand develop those muscles, drop the thumb in the back of the neck, and that will allow you to curl those knuckles. It will allow you to, to, to do everything that you need to do as far as basic fretting, okay? Now, so we got fingertips. We've got curling that last knuckle. We've got dropping the thumb behind the back of the neck. The last thing, I mean, there's other things you could do. People say drop your shoulder, do all these things. I promise you, if you just drop your thumb in the back of the neck, that's all you really need, okay? So you've got your thumb in the back of the neck. Now, where do you play on the fretboard? Check this out, let's zoom into this. So if here I am on the fret, okay? If I'm back here, I'm gonna get either a muted sound or a kind of buzzy, a weak buzzing sound. That's not good. We wanna be close to the fret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide up a little bit and that's where we wanna be. If you're over the fret, that's not good because now you've got this muted sound. So that's the magic spot right there. And you have a little leeway. Here's the deal, if it sounds right, you're doing okay. But if you're back here, you're working harder. So as you practice this, and again, you only have to do this in the beginning. I don't think about this. Most guitar players don't think about this once they get beyond it, okay? So here you go. One, two, three, four. You also, you also wanna get accustomed to using all of your fingers, okay? You've got four of them out in front of the fretboard. Let's use them all, shall we? Now, yes, the pinky is much shorter, and it's not you, it's the pinky, okay? Trust me in saying that everybody has a problem with their pinky, and their ring finger isn't that far behind either. Although it's a fairly long finger, it works. But because it's so small, I mean, over thousands or millions of years, however long you think we've been here, um, that finger is... It hasn't had a lot of practice, so it's gonna be lazy, okay? It's just gonna be lazy. So, with that being said, work it out. And you'll see some exercises in, or at least one exercise in that PDF uh, that you can find at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Go there. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're playing right behind that fret each time, okay? Once you do this and you get into this routine, you're gonna be golden, okay? I promise you, but you do have to practice this and you have to hyper-focus. I hear Tony Robbins talk about this all the time and it's 100% correct. If you're just kinda paying attention, you're just gonna kinda get it. If you're totally 100% focused on what it is you're doing, you're 100% gonna get it, okay? Because you're, you're, you're living, breathing it and you're doing it, you're immersed in it. So sit there and look and say, well, why is that having a problem? Don't look for somebody else to blame. Don't look for a problem with your guitar. Chances are it's not your guitar. It could be. It could be that the strings are too high, but chances are it's not. Once you get your technique down, everything's going to be great. Okay, that's basic fretting, and it's really important that you understand that because we're going to be using it, using it from here on out unless you play with something else other than your fingers, okay? You're going to be using your fingers a lot, so let's get used to it. Okay, now... Let's say you've been doing this for a bit. Some folks, they have this down and they're like, okay, I'm great with there, but my chords, I'm having chords that sound like this. Or I'm hearing a lot of muted notes. You know? Well, how do you fix that? Well, again, number one, look where my thumb is at. Yeah, I could play that chord clean with my thumb over the top of the neck, but that's only because I've really been doing this for so long. I never would intentionally do that in the beginning. Kiss of death, don't do it. Eventually, you'll slip into it where your thumb will come over the top of the neck. If you're playing the chord and your thumb's over the top of the neck, you're cool. 
but most beginners, I'd say 99% of all, 100% can't do that, okay? So don't worry, and if you can, it's no big deal. It's not like, yay, it's, you know, we're playing music here, that's, you know, let's try not to get the ego involved in this. So, in order to be able to play your chords correctly, you really gotta drop that thumb in the beginning and you've gotta curl those knuckles. Watch this, I'm gonna play this chord. Here's a C major chord, okay? Now listen to it, I'm gonna play it two different ways. Here is with my hand looking pretty good. I've got my thumb in the back of the neck, playing on my fingertips the whole nine yards, pretty close to playing on my fingertips. Now listen to this chord. So out of the five notes that I'm trying to play, I've got two of them playing. Okay, why is that? I'm doing three things right, but I'm not curling that last knuckle. You want to curl that last knuckle to the extent, to the, to the maximum extent. You can't overdo it, okay? Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the strings from hitting the pads of your fingers. So when you mute notes, when you're, when you're chording, that's the problem is hitting the back of the finger here. They're hitting the pads. And in order to do that, watch this only thing. Let's zoom in, let's zoom in on this one. So in order to, to actually get this, watch this one little movement. The only thing I'm gonna do is curl my knuckles. I went from this position to this position. That's the only thing I'm doing is I'm literally curling my knuckles. So you just wanna think as, as bendy as you can on those top knuckles, on that very top knuckle. Now watch. The difference between this and this is I'm curling that last knuckle. I'm bringing my hand out just a little bit more. That's another technique you can do where you're, you bring your wrist out. This is where some people say drop your shoulder and that sort of thing. You don't really wanna drop your shoulder. That can cause some problems later on, but you do wanna get that hand out front. And sometimes that requires kind of tucking your elbow into your, you know, right in here. Okay, now with, so when it comes to cording, you know, there's going to be issues at first. There's nobody who does not have issues with courting at first. Anybody who says they don't is just not being honest, okay? They're letting their ego get involved. Everybody has problems with chords at first, okay? I've never known a player ever to, 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 to just get this right away. So if we learn these tricks though, it's like teaching someone how to juggle or how to balance or think here, or look here, do this. These are tricks or little psychology things that we can do to where we can go, oh, okay, now I've got that, I get it. And I promise you, once you get it one time, you can do it a million times, then it's just practice afterwards. I always like when my students have that aha moment where they're like, oh, I get it, because that means the door's wide open and now they can do it, but they don't believe it, right? Um, I just um, I just sent an email out about this. I forgot the guy's name, Bannister is his name. I think it was in the 40s or 30s or something like that. This guy ran a four, four minute mile, I think it was. No one believed that he could run. No one believed that anybody could run a four minute mile. It was like this glass ceiling of, of running that everybody's like, nope, can't be done. It's an impossibility. And every, in everybody's mind, they couldn't do it. It was an impossibility, okay? Well, guess what? This guy broke a four minute mile, was on record. Everybody ah, went crazy. You know what happened that same year? A bunch of guys ran a four minute mile. What happened in the universe, right? Because this guy opened the door for everybody saying this is possible. So any guitar player that you see raging on the guitar doing you know, miraculous things, you, ha you gotta understand this. You, ha you have the possibility to do everything they're doing and more the possibility. Understand that that word possibility means it's possible. You can do it. The path is open. Doesn't mean you're gonna do it. it means you're gonna have to sacrifice a whole lot to do it. A lot of time, energy, practice, a whole, whole nine yards. But understand that it is possible. It's just a matter of focus and hardcore practice and practicing as much or more than what they did, okay? So, sorry, I have to go on a tangent there because I want you to understand that this is all possible. We can, every, there's no one watching right now that cannot do this, okay? All right, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, giveaways. We're gonna do some giveaways. We're gonna talk about um, all sorts of good stuff going on right now. Okay, so here we go. 
Uh, we're going to do three Twitter winners here in just a moment. Uh, but first off, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, my friends, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Why is that? Because, and I know folks that are there already, they're like, would you please shut up about this? I'd love to, but right now I guarantee you if I pop over to, to uh, YouTube, I guarantee you we can have 100, 200 people there. Oh, we have a thousand people and the, the chat roll is ridiculous. It's literally flying so fast I can't even see it. Go, well, don't go over there right now. But we have a thousand people over on, on there right now in the Facebook chat, or the, the chat. I've never seen it go so fast. It's ridiculous. I couldn't even catch one. It's going... I love that, that's fun. So we got a thousand people over on Facebook and that's cool that you're there, friends. I love you, thank you. But if you want the free PDF, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live. Get that free PDF there and all the stuff that I'm about to tell you about, you have access there. You won't really have access here on YouTube because because it's not on there, because it's just not on there, okay? So if you want that link, it's in the description of this video. Right underneath me, you'll see it there, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Click on that, go over, download the PDF, and watch me there. Uh, jump in the chat if, if you can. Uh, someone will bail. If someone bails out, you can always jump in there and, uh, and take their spot, okay? Sorry. Um, democracy, right? <laughs> Okay, so, and uh, and Facebook, I'm gonna head over to Facebook really quickly because I guarantee you we got, yeah, we got 36 folks over on Facebook. Facebook friends, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live, download the free PDF, uh, and then also you'll have other abilities to win doing that, okay? Here we go, now we're up to 1,100 people on Facebook or on, on YouTube, holy mackerel, that's crazy, we've never had that. Okay, so, um, here we go, we're gonna do some giveaways, but first let me tell you about a special that we're doing today. The Unstoppable Guitar System. This is my mammoth course. I've literally been building this thing. Uh, if you're just talking about building the videos and building the course, I've been doing it since 2012. But obviously for about 30 years before that, I've been building my knowledge, honing it to create a silver bullet guitar course for folks that are just like, I've tried it, I've tried it, I've tried it, Eric. I've been to one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons. I've taken online guitar lessons. I just, I keep failing. Listen, the first part of this course, there's a beginner, there's an intermediate, and there's an advanced section. And the intermediate and advanced gets some really cool stuff. Uh, we even have now, we have intermediate plus and, and advanced plus where we have just a ton of other stuff, genres and what have you. Anyhow, the beginner section walks you through this step by step. It's called Unstoppable for a reason. I didn't just throw that name out there. It's because if you watch these videos in order, you will learn how to play guitar and you're gonna learn the right way. You're gonna be good if you practice and you do the videos in order. I promise you that, okay? Uh, this course is mammoth. Um, right now we have over 68 hours of material in there. I think we have close to 600 lessons. I know it's between five and 600 lessons. That's 36 cents per lesson. Okay, 36 cents per lesson. Just do this math with me, 36 cents per lesson. 68 hours of video, okay? Normally here in Nashville, I charge 100 bucks an hour for a lesson, so you do the math. It's about $6,800 worth of lessons in the same studio by the same guy playing the same guitars, okay? So, and, and I would teach you the exact same way. I wouldn't teach you any differently. I have folks all the time that want to do Skype lessons or want, want to visit me here in Nashville. I do it at 100 bucks an hour just because my time is important because I'm trying to do stuff for other folks online as well. But all that to say, 36 cents a lesson inside the Unstoppable Guitar System um, today because normally this is a $400 course. Today, we're knocking off $200. So literally slicing it in half. If you want the code for that, that's at yourguitarsage.com slash live. There's other reasons I'm sending you there so that you can take advantage of this offer. So if you've ever thought about learning the guitar, my goodness, now's the time you can get in there for half the price that some other folks have gotten in there for. Even the folks that have gotten in there for the full price, they're stealing these lessons because they're, 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 awfully affordable, okay? And I do a lot of stuff online. I, I learn all the time online because it's so darn affordable and so convenient, okay? So um, go there, yourguitarsage.com slash live, and you can read all about that. Download the, the, uh, the coupon. 
okay? Um, there is space, there's some place on the website here where you can do that. Um, and there's also a three payment option, you'll see on the right there, uh, but the $200 is a one-time, you're gonna, you know, here I go, Eric, I'm doing this. Now, the other thing is this, listen, I know folks that are, that are like, man, I don't believe in buying stuff online. You're a crook, this, that, the other thing. I get it. I understand it. I've had my credit card compromised several times over, over my life. Um, it's no fun. But my friends, I'm telling you, we've got a, a closed system. There's no one getting in there. Um, no one is going to be messing with your credit card. We don't spam. We don't do any of that. And here's the deal. Get into the program today. If you don't like it, we have 30 days, you let me know. 29th day, you're like, Eric, sucks. I, you've got way too many lessons here. You've got nearly 600 jam tracks. You've got these visual jam tracks. Uh, you're, you're doing the live broadcasts to just the Unstoppable Guitar System folks. You're adding an hour of material every single month and there's close to 600 videos. This is too much, I'm out of here. If you're like that, then by all means, email us. We will, no questions asked, give you 100% of your money back. Easy enough, right? There you go, ironclad. Friends, let's do some winners and let's keep going with the broadcast, okay? So really quickly, we're gonna do some, some uh, Twitter winners. These are folks that have cut and paste the little bit that's right uh, to, to the right of my video at yourguitarstage.com slash live. That's why I'm sending folks there so you can win. We're gonna do three now, we're gonna do three at the end, and these first three winners are going to win ebook bundles from me. If you wanna know more about that, you can go to yourguitarstage.com. Uh, yourguitarstage.com, okay? Um, later on at the end of the broadcast, we'll be doing lots of giveaways for physical products, and those you can also find in my store. Uh, you can, you'll see the uh, link for that inside the description of the video, no matter where you're watching right now, okay? It's kit.com slash yourguitarsage. If you wanna know my personal choices of all the stuff I purchase, what have you, go there. Okay, three Twitter winners. Let's do this, my friends. Um, so, uh, Chris is going to be putting those up on the screen right now and I'm going to see if I can, if I can read these because I, I got to get up close because my eyes ain't what they used to be. Uh, so Charles Landis, first winner. Thank you so much, sir. So you can see there, Charles just uh, posted that up on the, the screen there and bingo, bango, Django. Katz, K-A-T-Z, I think if I'm reading that correctly. Number two, winner of the ebook bundle. Congratulations, my friend. And number three is Stephen, let me see if I can if I can get into this. Stephen Ferris, I believe it is. You guys can read it, I can't read it, that's all right. Those are our three winners, and here's the deal. Uh, for all the winners today, we're gonna get in touch with you, okay? You do not have to email us, we will get in touch with you. How, how do we know how to get in touch with you? Well, our Twitter folks, we just, We'll get in touch with you via Twitter. And those folks that have pre-registered to win the guitar and all the other stuff, they did that at yourguitarsage.com slash live, and they pre-registered, those folks can win, right? Don't fret if you didn't pre-register, okay? Because you can still win the ebook bundles. And look, we do this nearly monthly now. We give away thousands of dollars worth of amps, courses, guitars, every single month. So. There's next month if you didn't win today. There'll be the next month if you didn't win after that. And the next month and the next month. We keep doing this, okay? Uh, we give lots of stuff away. It's really fun. So without further ado, um, let's keep going, okay? All right. Uh, we're kind of on course. I'm three minutes behind. Okay. So let's get to the next bit here. You hear me say this a lot. Nine essential chords, right? Nine essential chords. Nine essential chords. Nine essential chords. These nine chords, what I found is just from literally playing thousands and thousands of songs. I'm just like, well, these are the same dang chords all the time. I learned how to use my capo, and I found out that I'm using the same nine chords all the time. Are there thousands of chords out there? Yep. Do you need to know them? Nope. Do I know them? Yeah, I do. Um, do I use them? Nah, not very often. If I'm playing jazz or, uh, or I mean, rock, yeah, there are some cases where I'm using a different chord, but... Why would we learn thousands of chords that we're not going to use very often as opposed to learning nine chords that we're going to use all day long in every single genre from here to the day we die? Why would we do that? Let's make life easier, right? Have you ever heard of Pareto's rule? It's the 80-20 rule. Basically says that, that if you take 20% of the knowledge, it has to be the right knowledge, of a particular subject, you can, you can be 80% proficient, basically. 
Same thing is true with the guitar. And this would be a perfect example of the 80-20 rule. In fact, it's probably more like a 90-10 rule in that you're learning 10% of the subject matter and you're slaying it, being able to play 90% of what's out there, okay? And that's what we're doing today. I promise you, do this stuff today. Go through these five steps. Go through that PDF. Watching this, you're, if you do the practice, it's going to deliver. I promise you. I've never not seen it happen. Okay, so let's talk about the nine essential chords. You probably know a lot of these chords because they're right under your fingers and you play them all the time. And you're going to be like, makes sense, okay? So here we go. These are covered in the PDF at yourguitarstage.com slash live right now where we also have the video. Okay, so the chords are... Now, I'm going to play, basically, I'm going to bring you down this path. The way that I like to think about guitar is, I mean, I play in all different keys. It doesn't matter what key, you know, we can play, I can play in all keys. But I try to keep things, in my mind, I try to keep things in the feel of G major, in the feel of C major. What I mean by that, the feel of is, well, I'll go into, I'll go into that in more detail in just a moment. But basically, I'll show you this in the key of G and then the key of C. Those two keys are the easiest keys to play on the piano. They're also the easiest keys to play on the guitar because they either have no sharps and flats or very limited, okay? For instance, the key of C on the piano is all the white keys. There are no black keys, no sharps or flats also known as accidentals. It's all the white keys. This is where everybody goes first. They play all the white keys. Man, it sounds magical, right? Because you're playing in a particular key. You're playing in C major, or also known as A minor. They're related. We're not gonna talk about that today, though. So, all the white keys, right? The key of G is the most closely related key to the key of C. It is all the white keys, except the F is sharp. So it's the only key that's going to be black that you'd be playing in the key of G, okay? So those keys are, are easy both on piano and the guitar because so the, the guitar is just laid out in such a way that you have these chords that appear in both keys. A lot of them appear in both keys and they're open chords and they're the first chords that you learn to, to play. So let's talk about it. In the key of G, and we're not going to talk about all the chords in the key of G, I'm just going to show you the easy ones that are part of the nine essential because those are the ones you're going to use all the time. There's a reason why people, songwriters who have never studied music theory, grab these same chords all the time. It's because they're easy. And they sound great, okay? Um, here we go. In the key of G, we have G major, C major, D major, E minor, and A minor. Okay? Now, I have those inside the PDF, so we're not going to talk about specifically playing these chords right now. That's going to take that would take way too long. We wouldn't get to the prizes, okay? So just know that these are the chords, and you don't have to write it down because you got the PDF, okay? So here we go. We got we got a G, we got a C, we got a D, we got an E minor, we got an A minor, okay? That's in the key of G. Now in the key of C, we have C major. D minor, E minor, G, and A minor. Okay, you can you notice that the G and the C, the A minor and the E minor are the same in both keys. Whoa, mind blown! I know. So that's what's so cool about this. Um, and then the so that's four chords, right? We and oh no, that's not four. That's not that's more than four chords. Now we also have a couple other ones that I'm gonna throw in there. Okay, which is A major and E major. Now if you're playing in the key of G and the key of C, you won't experience those chords very often. But there are two other chords that you could use that are really really helpful. Okay, I should name it the seven essential chords. But, uh, okay, so here we go. And then the last one I want to show you is the B7. So that's, that's a great chord, especially when you're playing in the key of G or E minor. It's a nice one to throw in there for a, a really cool sound, okay? So those nine essential chords are absolutely so important because if you can use those and you know, understand how to use a capo, then bingo, bango, you're going to be able to play thousands and thousands of songs because there's a there's a reason these chords keep coming up over and over again. They're basically the matrix of music. Without getting into all the details of it, there's a reason why these chords, you see them pop up all the time, is because they musically 
are harmonic and they work together. And in my videos in Unstoppable Guitar System, I drill down to those levels so that you understand, oh, well that makes sense, that's where they come from. Some folks, uh, like my wife, she doesn't care about the why as to how those things work. Uh, for me, I have to know those things in order to believe it. Because someone says, oh, this, that, and the other thing, do this thing and it'll work. And I'm like, okay, if it, if it works for all these people, maybe so, but kind of want to know why it works. And then if I know why it works, then my head can wrap around it, wrap my mind around it, and then, boom, I get it. You know what I'm saying? So, now, those are the nine chords you need to know. They're going to be awkward at first if you're just new to it, but I promise you, use the chord technique that I talked about, and you're going to be good. You're going to be golden, okay? Let's talk about the capo here for a moment. And um, I'm also going to hand off my laptop to Chris right now because I'm not seeing any of the chats on my yourguitarstage.com slash live page. And uh, we're going to try to resolve that really quickly before we get into this other part here. Um, Chris, I'm going to hand this to you. And uh, when you're done, I'll probably have to hook, the, have, hook all that back up. Oh, we should, we, did, did we just lose audio? Um, no. 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 That was just for, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't have lost audio. Nope. Um, okay, so I apologize for that. It's a live show, and that's what happens. Uh, and we, we'll, we'll have to see what happens with the chat, okay? But hopefully we will, have, we will be able to get to all the chats, because last time we went three and a half hours with chat <gasps> after we did the, the, the giveaways and everything else. How fun is that, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about strumming, okay? So this, as well, is covered in the PDF that you can find at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Those folks that are on YouTube, those folks that are on Facebook, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live. The link's in the description of the video because that's where the PDF is at and that's where I'm going to be answering the chat if we can get that up and running, okay? Which I'm sure we will. Okay, so strumming. Let's talk about it. There's some basics and if you know these basics, you're not going to have a problem with strumming ever. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have, that you're not going to make a mistake. But what I'm saying is you'll be able to have the, the wherewithal, the tools to break down strumming and to be able to hear strumming in a song and to be able to extrapolate that and bring it to your hands to where you're actually doing it, okay? So let's talk about some basics here. If you've ever um, listened to music and you're tapping your foot, you know, and you're like, three, four, one. In fact, this is the number one thing that I tell folks to do in the beginning is to be able to uh, count Okay, to be able to count to a song, one, two, three, four, because that's the beginning of all this. If you can't do that, that's something you want to be able to do. You may not be able to count at first, maybe you're just tapping your foot. Okay, that's a start. Then you want to look for the one, which is typically the heaviest beat, you know. One. Or so, so if this case in here we're going, then I'll say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, da 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 da, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's pick another song. Um, kids, right? You've heard this one. You've heard me play this one. Okay, so you got to be able to tap your foot first, then you got to be able to count. Those things take practice. Some folks, no problem, right? Um, but some folks are more rhythmically challenged. I think that comes from probably not being exposed to music as much as other people. They're not, they're not, they're not like in tune with it. They're not tapping their foot and getting into the music. I think that's where that comes from. But the, nonetheless, everything's learned on the on the with music. Everything, singing timing, pitch, intonation, it's all learned. Anybody tells you otherwise has misinformation. They may not be lying, but they have misinformation. It's all learned and it can all be learned exceptionally, okay? So we gotta be able to count first, okay? Now, when I'm tapping, right, my foot's hitting the ground. These are called down beats because my foot's going down. When my foot comes up, the antithesis of the down beat, right, the opposite of it, that's an up beat. So we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well, when my foot comes up in the air, that's the and. 
So I got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? Very important that you throw those ands in there because we're gonna be using those for our strums. Now, the, the, the most basic strum is your one, two, whoop, let's do this, let's turn off that reverb here. So we got one, two, three, four, bam. Right? Right, so we got two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Angus knew what he was doing, right? So here we have, and you can hear him even in that song, you can hear him strike that one a little harder. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, and that is the first strum that you gotta do. It's all downstrokes. It's easy, most everybody can do that, right? They're just strumming down. When their foot's going down, you're strumming down. And this is going to be our motif. This is going to be our pattern for, for, for strumming. Down strum on the down beat. Up strum on an up beat. Okay? The only uh, exception to that is if, if we've doubled the speed of the strum. Okay? Which you're not going to do very often. We won't even talk about it today because it's just going to confuse you. Let's remember Pareto's, Pareto's rule, 80-20, right? Let's learn the stuff that we're going to be using all the time. Okay? We can get to the more advanced stuff, and I do this in other videos, okay? So, we got this down, up, when our foot comes up. So we got down, 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 okay? And that's number one in the strumming exercise that you're gonna find on the PDF at yourguitarstage.com slash live. And we're doing it, and I gotta make sure I'm on time here. Yep, okay. So we got down. Now an upbeat is going to happen on the up strum. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Make sure in the beginning you're doing straight beats instead of swing. A straight beat is, is like an even tick, 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 as opposed to a skip, which would be like bop, 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 or, or a shuffle. So this is straight beat. One and two and three and four. Just think real mechanical like a robot. Bop, 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 bop. A shuffle, some people call it a swing, um, is, you could think about it like skipping, and it's often done in blues. So instead of... A straight beat like this, you're gonna hear. Okay, don't do what I'm doing right now. I want you to do the straight one, not the shuffle. When you're working on these strumming rhythms, do the straight beat first. Later on, you can come back and do shuffles once you get the straight beat down. But the shuffle is yet something else that's gonna mess with your mind a little bit. And if we're thinking about that juggling unicyclist on a tightrope, we gotta do baby steps. And if you get the baby step, boom, move to the next one, okay? You can do the steps as fast as you want, but just make sure you do them right, okay? So that's the thing. People think, oh, I can't go through all those steps. I need to shortcut. You can't shortcut, okay? You can't really shortcut, but you can go through those steps so quickly if you want. And if you're doing it right, perfect, great, do that. But you got to go through the steps. Don't leave any stone unturned. Don't leave any holes in your playing, because I hear players all the time where they're like, God, I've been playing for 30 years, and I... And I didn't even know this, okay? It's because they're leaving stuff on the table. They're leaving, you know, they're, they're not learning all the bits and pieces that you really need to learn. Okay, now, here we go. So we got one and one and two and three and four and, right? It's also a base, very basic strum, but it all comes down to that. That is the pattern that you would use as the template for all strumming that you're going to be doing, okay? Now, I'm going to throw in one other strum in here really quickly, and it's going to be a ghost strum. It's where we don't hit the strings, and you're gonna see this in, with a description in that PDF. Let's say we have a, a strumming rhythm like one, two, and, and four, and. This is the very last strumming rhythm, so I'm not asking you to do it right now. You're gonna have to work up to it, but if it's like one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. See, what's gonna happen is, basically, when you see in that little matrix that I've created for you, when there's a, a number missing or a plus missing, that's the and, when you see that missing, you still move your hand, but you don't hit the strings. It's called a ghost strum. Why do you keep moving your hands? Why, Eric, that's a waste of time, a waste of energy. No, it's not because it's gonna make you stay in time and it's also gonna make sure that your down strums are down strums and your up strums are up strums. Absolutely, crucially important. So, if, we're do, if we see one, two, and, and four, and, where the and of one is missing in the three, one, two, and, and four, and, yes, then we would do this. Watch. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and 
I'm doing this really exaggerated strum because if you don't, it's going to, um, it's going to, you're going to be, the chances are you're going to mess up easier, okay? There's chances are you're going, you're going to mess up quicker, okay? So really important that you do that. And if you're having problems with this on the ghost strums, hit your knee. It doesn't seem that when we have a ghost strum um, coming up, it doesn't seem that we really need to do this, what I've found over the years. But when we have that down strum, if it's missing, your hand will stall up here. Right now, you may not know what I'm talking about, but you will if you, if you start doing these exercises. If you haven't before, you're going to experience this, and you're going to be like, oh, dude, this is exactly what Eric was talking about. So what I do is, in the beginning, for, for beginners, what I do is I say, hit your knee, hit your thigh, or hit the bottom of your guitar like this. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. That's exaggerated, but it's okay. Uh, you know, or the bottom of your guitar. That would be the second thing you could do. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Because the mind mentally, psycho psychologically, needs a reason to come down here. Because most people will go one, two, and, and four, and. Now they're all off. They stall up here. One, two, and, and four, and. So may not look bad to you, but that's not the proper way to strum. Now, all that I showed you just now, if you came to visit me here in Nashville, it's exactly what I would show you, okay? Um, so make sure that you go through those exercises one at a time. I want to make sure I'm on time for you guys. I do not want to waste your time. Okay, so here we go. We need to move a little bit quicker. Let's talk about the capo. Where's my capo? Here's my capo. Um, so, capo. Um, got it working? Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, he said he said YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Okay, folks, that's what we're gonna be doing then. Um, I apologize for that. So, <laughs> YouTube folks, you're in luck because I'm gonna be answering comments in YouTube, not in. Uh, hey, uh, Chris, can you come in here one sec? Can you plug this in? Um, plug that other one in. Right there at the bottom. Or, or just hand it to me. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so well, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to use the capo here. And again, I apologize uh, for whatever reason. Our chat went down. We probably blew it up. Is what happened. Whoa, we've got a hundred and we've got twelve, almost almost twelve hundred people over at YouTube. Amazing. Well, as luck would have it, YouTube, I'm gonna be looking at your questions instead of in the chat roll. I'm sorry for some reason the chat roll. I think we we blew it up. We've got so many people in there. So. We're gonna need a different solution. That's a good problem to have, okay? I'll, I'll get to the product in my hair in just a moment, Kevin. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so here we go. How to transpose, how to use the capo. Now, this is pretty magical. Let me show you. First off, how to use a capo. Of course, you just clip it and put it on your guitar. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how to understand what key you're in when using the capo. This is crucial to be able to use those nine essential chords so that you can play those thousands of chords without that without knowing how to use your capo you're not going to be able to play thousands of chords or thousands of songs you'll be able to well you will but you'll be able to play 12 times as many with the capo okay because you'll be able to play in 12 different keys um or, or close to there okay you'll it's something probably around 10 times as much with the capo so important that you understand how to use the capo otherwise you really will have to keep everything in the key of g or c okay now if somebody says Okay, well, what about the key of G sharp? Okay, easy enough, and we're gonna go over something harder here in just a minute. But let's say we're playing in the key of G, G major. We got G and D and E minor and C, right? And someone says, well, play it in the key of G sharp. Boom, we use our capo. Capo acts as a nut. This is the nut, it's the zero fret. We can't go beyond that, right? Unless we detune our guitar. But we can go up, we can shorten the string length, and as we do, we the pitch goes up. So here I am. I put the capo right here, close to the fret, and now I'm playing the same forms, right? G and C and D, but if I was playing with a band, they're gonna say, well, that's not G, C, and D, that's G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp, because we just went up a half step, okay? Now, you do have to know the notes on the fretboard. That's a, that's a basic that's, that's covered in all my courses. It's in the free course. For those of you that know you're not going to, to get a course today, um, I've, got a, I've got a free course for you that covers the basics. Um, but 
you got you do have to know the notes on the fretboard, which is a basic thing to do. I literally have videos for that on YouTube. Can show you that in five minutes. Okay, uh, we're not going over that today. That's too easy. So here we go. We got G. We got C. We D. Those are the feels. But realistically, we're in the key of G sharp. And now if I wanted to play in the key of A, I have A, D, and E. And I can just keep going up the fretboard like this. Now, for some of you, you're like, whoa, slow down, slow down. You're, you're, I have to write all of this down. No, you don't. It's in the, the, the PDF I'm giving you. And I'll show you all the chords and what key you're going to if you have to use the capo, uh, what key you'll be in, what it will look like, okay? So check that out. Now, one last thing really quickly, okay, because we're going to do winners here in just one moment. I, I try to keep as close to that top of that um, uh, top of the hour here as possible. Okay, really quickly, someone says, what about G flat? What about going down in pitch? Okay, we got G here. How about can we play in G flat? Well, anything beyond, think about this. If it's G, anything below G, you're going to be playing with the feel of C. Anything Below C, you'll be playing with a feel of G. So you just think it's the opposite. So watch this. So we're in the key of G. Someone says play in the key of G flat. Okay, well then I'm gonna need to play a C chord, but that's gonna need to sound like a G flat. So I'm gonna take this C. D, E, F, F sharp, which is also G flat. Okay, I know I'm doing this fast, but I'll cover all this stuff for you inside the PDF, right? So there is my G flat. And this is what I mean by a C feel, because it feels like a C. So I bring the capo over here. Now, I'm playing in the key of G flat, and I'm gonna use those same chords, right? C, D minor, E minor, G, A minor. We're playing, if you know those two keys, it's really easy to do. Uh, someone says play in the key of F. I'm gonna, obviously, I could play an F chord here, but we're trying to keep everything to the feel of G and C. That means all those chords, but we're using the capo, so we're not actually in that key. So if someone says play in the key of F, I'm gonna take a C chord, right, because it's below a G, and I'm gonna say a C chord, and I'm gonna say C, D, E, F. There's our, there's our C chord. I'll put the capo right behind it, right? It's gonna look the same way. It's just like the nut. So now I'm playing in the key of F. Let's take C. Someone says play in the key of B, Eric. Okay. So we're going to play in the, the key of B. We can't play it with the C feel. we got to play with a G feel. So here's a C. I mean, we could, but we'd be fretting. We'd be capoed way up here. So here we go. C, B. Here's also a B. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that G chord right there. Put our capo right here. Now, for some of you, you're like, man, I still don't get it. That's okay. You're, I don't expect you to just get all. I mean, normally I would do all this stuff with students. This would be like two months of lessons that we would painstakingly go over for a half hour, an hour every day, okay? So it's going to take a little bit of time, but that PDF is going to help a ton, an absolute ton, okay? So is my free course. For those of you that just know you're not, you know, this is just not happening, you're just not even, you know, I don't have $200, but you need just the very, very, very basics of guitar, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. The link for that's in the description of this video. Otherwise, chat rolls back up. Chat rolls back up. Okay, yay. The limit is now 500 people. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, folks, we are going, uh, we are going to the chat roll then at yourguitarsage.com slash live and just in the nick of time because we're going to be doing some giveaways here but first we're going to oh there's the chat roll hooray all right um, i sounded like the target lady there hooray all right so here we go um we t we covered everything didn't we yes we did folks okay Really quickly, let's. Um, we're going to go into some winners here in just one moment. Otherwise, last call to action. Listen, folks, if you're on YouTube, I, I stand corrected. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live. This is where you're going to find all the stuff I'm talking about, the free PDF, the whole nine yards, and the link is in the description of the video on YouTube and Facebook. Head over there right now. Um, we literally, it's filling up, whoa, massively. This is the biggest we've ever had this. So go over there right now. I love to see that because now I know, this is the first time I've been able to see that, yes, people are hearing what I'm saying and they're headed over there. Again, you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook. We have 100 people open. You can still get your questions answered over in the chat roll. Go over there right now, yourguitarsage.com slash live. You also got the PDF. Okay, so really quickly, um, if you look over to the right-hand side, this is where I'm giving you direction. I'm helping you out here. 
Uh, if you look over on the right hand side, today, what we're doing, and this is gonna be good until Wednesday, November the 8th. That's when we're closing doors on this, okay? Literally, okay? But if man, if you've been thinking about playing guitar and you're like, hey, I get what Eric is saying. If you don't, if you're like, this guy's a stooge and I don't like his hair, then obviously don't buy the course. You don't, it's not gonna help, you know, you gotta like who you're learning from, right? And you may just not like me or my, my ties. Um, but nonetheless, if you are looking to, to really play guitar today, we're knocking $200 off the lifetime subscription. If you were to visit me here in Nashville, that would be two one-hour lessons. And you're getting 68 hours of video. What? Yes, 68 hours of video for the price of two hours of video or two hours of live lessons from here in Nashville. I know that'd be fun. We could hang out and get lunch and all that stuff, but you're getting a lot more value by this course, okay? Literally, that works out. We worked the math out before the, before the broadcast here. It works out to 36 cents a lesson, okay? I don't know about you, but when I just started playing guitar, uh, it was $7.00. Uh, $7 for a half hour lesson. I thought that was crazy expensive. Um, but nonetheless, you've got it right there. Um, over on the right, you can click on that, the full details. If you don't like that, if you're like, I don't have $200 today, I want to do a, 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 you know, three payments or something like that, you can do that as well, but not with the $200. It's a different offer, okay? We can only do that for folks that are coming in and saying, yeah, I'm getting it today. Okay, um, what else is there? We've got other stuff there, the reviews, the whole nine yards, okay? But, friends, if you're looking to do this, we're gonna get into the winners here right now. Uh, if you're looking to do this, it, there's never been a better time. It's cheap, it's hella cheap, and, uh, and you're not gonna be upset, I promise you. And here's the deal. As I say always, you've got 30 days. Get in there today. If you don't like it in 30 days, in 29 days, say, Eric, too much content. I'm learning way too much. I am an absolute amazing guitar player. I don't need you anymore. And say, say la vie. I don't, I don't need you, Eric. That's fine. I'm not even getting my feelings hurt, okay? I go on. I'm finding other folks that need to know to play guitar. No feelings hurt here. We give you 100% of your money back. No big deal. Seriously, I don't care. Um, I'd love you to stay, but if uh, it wouldn't hurt my feelings is what I'm saying, okay? So check it out. Go there today. You're going to get $200 off. Let's do those winners, okay? Shall we? Okay, first off, we're gonna start with Twitter winners, and these are gonna be for the first, and I'm gonna grab this here, that's uh, our first Twitter winner. So again, folks, uh, if, if you're new to this, these are folks that have copy and pasted what's just to the right of the video here. And our first winner here, if I can read this correctly, is Maria Daniels. Maria Daniels, thank you so much, Apple, for creating an iPad that's bigger and that's super high res, because this text is teensy. <laughs> Uh, okay, Ralph, and this is my contacts now that they're, they're giving me problems. I think it's Linzer, but you can read it. Uh, Robin Linzer, you know who you are. Uh, thank you so much. And there's your avatar. With, with the dog, would you have a little dog there? I love dogs. I love animals. Uh, and John Devaney, I believe it is. John Devaney. Our three winners of the ebook bundles. These are ebooks that I have at yourguitarsage.com. You'll see it. I've got a free ebook there as well if you ever want it. Um, so check that out. But those winners are going to win, uh, they're going to win three of my books, okay? It's an ebook bundle, okay? Bingo, bango, jango, you just won. Thank you so much. And we're gonna get in touch with you. By the way, all the winners today, we're gonna get in touch with you. We have for the net now the physical product winners uh, and the Unstoppable Guitar System winners, those are folks that have emailed us. They registered beforehand. That's why you want to make sure that you're always signed up ahead of time so that you can win all this stuff, okay? All right, so let's talk about the uh, Power Pack winners. These are Guitar Power Pack winners. What's in the Power Pack? I'll say it one more time. Uh, an X Guitar X Capo, a personalized Dragon's Heart pick. You see me use these all the time. They're killer picks. They got great tone, and they're, liter they're lit literally going to laser engrave a picture of you or whatever you want to have on that pick, they're gonna do that. They may even send you a few, I'm not sure. Uh, but nonetheless, 
they're going to be literally sending it out to you directly. Uh, the vibes, did I mention vibe strings? No, you're going to get uh, at least one set, maybe a couple sets of vibe strings. I'm not sure how they do that anymore. Um, but they're the strings that I use on my SJ200. So if they're good enough for that beauty, uh, my Gibson SJ200, they're good enough for you. I promise they're amazing strings. And the last one is a clip on Uber Tuner by Click. K-L-I-Q. Four winners are going to win this today. Okay, and here they are. You ready? So the first one, and now you can see that we've we've X'd out the um, the bit here. Uh, we've X'd that out because obviously we don't want people spamming or <laughs> creating a this at Yahoo. Okay, okay you got it. Okay, um, okay, and this is C A P E G E O. I believe that's dot music. I can't see the little cursors in the way there, but uh, C A P E O G E O dot music at something or another. Okay, that's your first winner. We're gonna reach out to you. This is for the power packs. Okay, congratulations, my friend. P C A one seven zero. Hey Chris, can you move that cursor off the screen there, bud? P C A one seven zero is going to win. It's just the the mouse bit, the the arrow. Thank you, bud. Uh, Power Pack winner number two. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, Power Pack winner number three is uh, Bob. I think it's G A G. I still can't read it, but Bob, you see, you see your name on there. You're the winner. And uh, number four is She High Productions. She High Productions. You got it. You see you see what I'm what we're doing there. Okay. Um, congratulations. We're going to get in touch with you. We're going to send those bits and pieces out. We're going to get in touch with the manufacturers. They're going to send them out to you. Jam. Okay. Awesome. You're going to love this stuff. Okay. Um, we've got four unstoppable guitar system winners. Okay. Remember, these courses are normally 400 bucks. We're doing them for 200 bucks today. Okay. That's the special. It's over to the right of the chat roll right now. With that being said, normally this is a, these are $400 courses, okay? We do this all year long. They're $400. And we have four winners of this today. Uh, let's do number one. Uh, this is for lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. So C. Johnson, that's probably like Chris Johnson, um, dot engineer at blankety blank, at blank spot, okay? Congratulations, my friend. Awesome. I love it. I love giving stuff away. It's so fun. Uh, Joseph... Um, so that arrow's still in the way there. Something or another 89 at blankety blank. Okay, you got it. Number two, or that was number two. Number three is B Brad um, something, something or another. You can see it right there on the screen. And the fourth winner of our lifetime unstoppable guitar system is Lawrence. Benbow, is it? Henbow, Benbow. Uh, congratulations to all of you. We're going to get in touch with you via your email, and uh, and you're going to be in the system. Woo! It's so fun. I'm telling you, you're going to learn. We have nearly 600 jam tracks in this thing now. Uh, we're creating these all the time. Now we're putting up visual jam tracks where you can see the chord as it's going by. Why is that helpful? Watch my videos on, on keeping in touch with the chords as you're playing because it's gonna make you a more melodic player, okay? Bingo, bango. Okay, so we got um, the four power pack winners. And then lastly, um, oh, that's it, right? That's all, that's it. That's all the prizes that we have. Oh, no, that's right, the Strat. Okay, let's do that. So here, you, here we go, you ready? Drum roll, please. Uh, the Strat winner. Here we go. Surprise, Brosif. Are you serious? Is this is this his email? That's amazing. Surprise, Brosif. You're the winner. Yeah. Oh man, I love that. So the Strat winner is surprise, Brosif. Um, now, what we ask uh, from folks is we've we've as we've been doing these these giveaways, we've been asked. And by the way, stick around because last time we did this broadcast. Um, I did an hour broadcast and I literally did two hours and 20 minutes of, of Q&A, okay? So we have, we got four places open over at the chat room. So if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you got, there's four positions open. Do it right now, yourguitarsage.com slash live and get your questions answered, all right? Um, 
So what was I going to say? Oh, what we've been doing lately is for our winners, we've been asking them to send us a video or post a video on Snapchat or, or I'm sorry, on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, those sorts of things, because we really want folks to see that these really are winners. We're not just saying these folks are winners. Um, you're never going to see me play this guitar again because it's going away. Um, so there you go. All right. Okay. So let's get into some questions. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. We're having a blast here. This has been the best uh, broadcast so far, and um, and I thank you so much. It's because of you guys. Okay. No. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm over at yourguitarsage.com slash live. That's where I'm answering these questions. So the first question that I see, I'm going to address it. Sander, don't worry. Um, don't worry. There's good. We do this every single month. So there's going to be plenty of, of stuff to win, okay? All right, I'm zipping all the way to the bottom of the chat, and here I go. How do I download the jam tracks to put on my looper? Someone's asking Tom is saying. Uh, Tom, that's a computer question. I can't help you with that, but it's possible. You could do it, uh, but that's a computer question. I wouldn't be able to answer that. <clears throat> but you could do it. You could put it in your looper. Uh, Andy's saying, what do you think of John Frusciante um, or his solo are into his solo music. I haven't heard his solo music, but I think he's amazing. And everybody asks me about him. It's so strange. All the time they ask me about him. Love him. One of my favorite guitar players ever. Uh, just a tasty, tasty player. And if your question gets missed and you can always post it again, just uh, maybe copy and paste it and post it again, okay? Um, Eric, what are your thoughts of online course lessons and live lessons combined? I think it's a great idea. I have a whole video for that on YouTube about one-on-one -on -one lessons and live lessons and the benefit to both because there's a benefit to one-on-one -on -one lessons. I've done it for years. I still take one-on-one -on -one lessons when I see a guitar player that does, uh, does stuff that I can't do or I'm trying to get in their mind. I do it all the time. So I love that. Um, so one-on-one -on -one lessons are great. I don't knock them at all. Uh, the thing about online lessons is if I make a video, it can go out to millions of people so I can help millions of people so it drives that price down and it can help out all sorts of folks right so I'm a big fan of doing both yeah uh, technique for making sure low E string is not sharp when using a capo Robert the, you know make sure that you're on an, on an electric you're using an adjustable capo so that it's not pressing down the strings too hard if you're using just a clamp style capo uh, it, it will probably bend them out of pitch the other thing you can do is once you have the capo on then just adjust the tuners tune the guitar again that's what I do is I'll put the capo on I'll put a tuner on and I'll go ahead and adjust everything accordingly Eric you see a lot of you see a lot of experienced players that don't use their fingertips while soloing is the fingertip uh, more important I think you probably said when cording because it, it went by so quick here's the deal uh, when yeah when soloing right in fact what you want to do a lot of times is you want to get handsy okay with the strings and what I mean by that is you want your fingertip like it may look like they're playing like this, but I guarantee you they're using their fingertips. Uh, now, if you're playing double stops, right? Then in that case, yeah, you're playing, because you're barring, you have to do that. But if I'm just playing individual notes, then it's not, I'm using my fingertips. But the other thing that I'm thinking about is I'm thinking the all the other strings are going to be muted, okay? I'm not going to, um, all the other strings are going to be muted because I don't want them sounding out. And it's, we're not strumming the guitar, we're hitting individual notes. So what I'll do then is I'll you'll see me go, you know, I mean, even doing that right there, you can see I've got this finger down, but I'm using the rest of my finger here to mute all the other strings, so I just hear the one note. And I'll also do the same thing with my picking hand. You know? Good, good, good. All right, great questions. Do, uh, do I have to learn chords and scales before I have fun? Nope, you don't have to at all. You just start learning songs. Uh, in fact, I really encourage folks to learn songs, learn songs, learn songs, learn songs, because 
Um, people don't want to hear you play chords and scales on stage. They want to hear you play music. And a chord, chords and scales ain't music. All right? They're chords and scales. They're not music. If you put them together and you create songs with them, then you got music. But no one cares how many scales or chords one knows. They care about good music, right? How to keep count of measures when playing a song. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people will count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Now, when you get up to uh, the thousandth measure of a song, it's not very fun, uh, but you get the idea. That's how, that's how folks do it. What effects have you been using today? They sound great. Thank you, Mitch. Um, so um, let's go over to the pedal cam if we can, if it's up. Um, and, and really, the effects that I'm using today are, are, are really fairly minimal. Um, you know, I'm using, you know, right now, right now, uh, when I'm playing in this mode, I'm getting uh, just the sound of the amp and I'm getting the natural reverb from the amp. Can you hear it? There's just a, a bit of reverb in there, not a whole lot. But now, if I want to get to ramp up that reverb, I'm gonna hit this guy right here, which is my Hall of Fame. That's this, this red one here, okay? Um, and really, for the most part, that's, that's all I'm using right now. Um, I will be using some other effects. Or I, ha I did earlier in the broadcast. Oh, uh, no, I didn't use that earlier. I've just been using reverb today and really a little bit of overdrive. So right now, right now, the only thing you're hearing is this spark pedal, and that gives it just a little bit of grit. You know, uh, as opposed to this sound. Whoop. Okay, so it gives a little bit of little bit of cut there. Jason would like you to mention the two hundred dollars off. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, so, so really, just a little bit of grit there, and a little bit of reverb, and um, that's that's really it. That's all I've used today. Okay, uh, really quickly, folks. Uh, we'll get let's get to some more questions here in just one second. But if you haven't already, listen to me. We've got two hundred dollars off the unstoppable guitar system today that equates to point it equates to 36 cents per lesson 36 cents per lesson i don't know about you but when i started playing guitar uh, it was seven dollars for a half hour lesson uh, but in this case here uh, now i charge a hundred dollars an hour here in nashville and um, and so i know that's expensive i understand that but the demand is such that I have to do that. Otherwise, I, I can't teach online, and obviously I can reach a lot more people online. So with that being said, the Unstoppable Guitar System has 68 hours. 68 hours of video, of lessons, uh, at 100 bucks an hour. That's like 6,800 bucks, right? Uh, but with that being said, normally we charge $400 for this course, and today we're literally cutting it in half, Okay. It's 200 bucks today. If you've ever thought about getting, if you're serious about guitar, if you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. I want to get good. This is what I do with everything. I'm like, I'm done. I've got to get to that gym and I've got to do this. And I do it. I go there and, I, and my life is changing because of things like that. It's, it's important to, to, to set a goal, set your flag in the sand and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I want to be good at this. So if you are one of those folks that's like, I really want to be good at this, then you know, don't don't dork around with it. Get in there. If you don't like it, if it's too many lessons for you, if all of a sudden you don't like my hair, my tie, then uh, you say, Eric, I don't like you anymore, and I'll give you 100% of your money back, and you'll be able to have all those lessons for free there for your, during your time, right? So it's a win-win, all right? So do that, my friends. Uh, there's between 500 and 600 lessons in there. There's between 500 and 600 jam tracks. Uh, we do, you know, live broadcasts just with those folks where the chat roll isn't going a million miles an hour. Okay, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, new hour of material every single month. 
you know. So check that out. Yeah, 560 plus lessons. Why isn't F major from the key of C not part of, you're asking the, uh, not part of the nine chords? Seems like one of the majors uh, is important to know. Uh, why we had a lot of major chords in there, for sure, Tim, and it's a great question. The reason that I don't have it as part of the nine essential is because a lot of people cannot play a bar chord. And again, uh, you know, you know, some folks will, will criticize that and they'll say, well, why wouldn't you teach people that? Well, I teach bar chords all day long. I've got a gazillion videos on bar chords, okay? It's not that I don't teach it, but a lot of folks are coming to guitar and folks will throw a bar chord at them or a diminished scale. Oh, you got to know this. And it's like, they just get discouraged and they stop playing. Well, my whole point is I want you to play. I want you to have fun. So and I, I give you, you know, you, you give... You give a child what they need at first, little little steps, right? And then you get you grow into that. So I would not give a newbie a bar chord ever because it's just going to uh, it's going to make them sad. Okay, but but it's a great chord. Yeah, uh, watch my effing F chord if you have a problem with it. If you have a problem playing the effing F chord, uh, E F F I N G. It's on YouTube. I know uh, each does its own thing, but do you have a preference between single coil and humbucking tones? Um, hate day the same. Well, when it comes to blues, I really when when it comes to blues and that kind of bluesy plan that I'm that I've been doing here today is I love single coil pickups. If I'm doing like a searing solo, any shredder type of stuff, or real singing type of, of guitar sounds, then I'm always going to reach for a humbucker because those sustain a lot longer and they just sing. Ah, right, go out, go have a bite and come back as uh, Nigel Tufnell said in Spinal Tap. Um, so I prefer, uh, prefer humbuckers when doing more you know, singing type leads and more um, uh, single coil when I'm doing more like gritty type of, type of stuff, if that makes any sense. You're welcome, Viking. Okay, um, should I persevere trying with normal chords or should I use alternate easy chords to get started? Small hands. Always start with easy. Always. Listen, everybody. Start with easy. Don't, you know, there's not like, and I do this, I have the same problem. I used to do this. I do this with, I used to do it with everything. I would do the hardest stuff first. I mean, my first song that I learned on classical guitar was Bore. It's not an easy tune my first tune. It took me months to learn. And that was fine. I did it. But most people would have bailed out and been like, this is too hard to do because you shouldn't start with something so hard. You should baby step up. Number one, so you have that reward every time. So you're like, boom, got a song. Boom, got a song. Boom, got a song. I'm getting bored with these smaller songs. Let's, let's move up to intermediate level. Boom, got a song. Boom, got a song. Boom, got a song. Tired of this. I need more, something more advanced. Now you're doing advanced songs. But step by step by step by step, really, really important. Is it better to be a front man in front of a band or just blend in with a back line? Just depends on what you want to do. That's personal, that's personal taste. If I sign up, uh, can you promise not to sell the wife? She's still mad about fishing gear and quad. Says, uh, says hi to my two dogs, Gus and Daisy. Nice. What's up, Gus and Daisy? Um, okay, okay. Somebody switched to, to lighter strings. Yep, okay. Uh, I tend to play an open G with fingers two, three, four, leaving one finger hanging back. Um, it makes playing a C chord faster for me, but is that bad habit or should I try to break? No. Here's the deal. Um, uh, some amazing guitar players have their own little schisms and own little things that they do on the guitar that some that other guitar players could look at and say, well, that's wrong. That's not the proper technique. I mean, if you've ever taken classical guitar lessons like I did for, for three years or more in college, I do tons of stuff that my classical guitar teacher would be like, dude, that's not right. Don't do that, you know what I mean? But um, that's because they have a specific thing that they're asking, okay? By the way, I've just bumped over to YouTube and I saw the chat going absolutely bonkers, absolutely mad. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, listen to me. Listen, YouTubers and Facebook. Head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live. I'm not even looking at those other chats because I don't have three monitors in front of me. I only have one monitor. So head over there right now, and that's where the coupon codes are at for you know half off of the Unstoppable Guitar System. That's where the PDF is at. Head over there right now, and that's where I'm taking the questions, not on YouTube, not on Facebook. Um, please, folks, do that, okay? Uh, Eric, how advanced do your lessons get? They get very advanced, very advanced in theory, very advanced in technique. Um, I mean, 
very advanced. So I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, we get into specific genres like swing guitar, blues, specific techniques, gear, uh, right down to pedals and whole, I mean, I have series once you get into the Unstoppable Guitar System or maybe I'll have a 20 part series on gear where we talk about pedals and chords and picks and amps and guitars and bits and woods and tubes and all that stuff. So we get advanced, okay? We get for sure. Um, I mean, you can't have nearly 600 videos of just basic stuff, right? For sure. Uh, don't blow up your servers. I know, yeah, that happened. We've, we've had that before, right? Um, how do I keep my fingers from flattening when stretching to different frets, like when you play the C chord, Carl is saying. You follow the technique that I talk about, um, that I talked about earlier in the program, okay? Uh, curling those knuckles. That's what you've got to do. You've got to drop that thumb behind the back of the neck and curl those knuckles. If you don't do that, there's going to be a problem. Uh, always use a question mark, folks, when you're asking these questions. Otherwise, they go by too quick and I can't see them. How do I train myself to play with the strap lower? After a certain point, um, I can't reach the lower strings with ease. You know what's happening? It's because you're doing this. Your guitar's down here, right? Like arms, like uh, Billy Armstrong, right, from Green Day. And, and you can't, I mean, if your hand's like this, well, you can't drop your thumb. Your hand's too 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 much. So get a, get a happy medium. If you want to play it low, I know it looks so cool, right? Um, you know, bring it up a little bit. It's not going to make you a better player to play it way down low. It's going to be it's going to be worse. Okay, so do not do that to where it's it's compromising your uh, your fingers. As a newbie, seems uh, that one that one went by too quickly. What do you think uh, of Gamify? plays like Musician and Rocksmith Remastered. I think they're great if they get you to play the guitar, but if you think that you're gonna be some, become some great guitar player from just using those, the chances are slimmer because there's a lot of stuff that you're not that you're just not learning and there's techniques and things like that that they're just not able to do. But if it has your hands on the instruments, I think it's fun and I think it's great. I don't own them. I probably should get one of those, not Musician. I don't, I don't think that it doesn't look very intriguing to me, but uh, what's the other one? Uh, Rocksmith looks fun. Um, yeah. Hey, Eric, uh, I'd like to mic up my Yamaha acoustic. What do you suggest? You know, don't mic it. Get um, get the LR Bags Anthem, A-N-T-H-E-M. It's the best acoustic pickup that you can use in an acoustic guitar, and it sounds absolutely fantastic, all right? Okay, how do you download? Okay, we've asked Tom asked that one already. Uh, Tom, uh, as far as downloading jam tracks to UG, from UGS, we have we've got nearly 600 jam tracks in the Unstoppable Guitar System. He's asking how he can download it into his Looper. That's a computer question, Tom, and I wouldn't be able to answer that for you because I don't know. I, I just don't have that Looper pedal. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't know how to do that. Uh, it's a computer question, but. I'm sure it can be done. I mean, it's it's a file, so it it surely can be brought in there. You know. Um, and do a few bars of Sultans. Come on. Jeff, I just posted uh, two solos of Sultans of Swing on Instagram, so uh, check that out there, my friend. Okay, wow, it's going quickly. How do I choose the right strings? Don't, uh, if you're talking about size of strings, uh, Jason, thank you so much for posting that. Jason just posted the $200 off lifetime membership to Unstoppable Guitar System. Folks, if you're looking to get in there, my goodness gracious, I'm literally handing you $200 right now. It's 36 cents per lesson, okay? 68 hours of lessons at an hour, uh, at an hour of, uh, I'm sorry, at $100 an hour, which is what I charge here in Nashville, it's literally $6,800 worth of lessons for you um, at 36 cents a piece. $200 off today, you get in the whole lifetime membership for 200 uh, bucks. You, you'll be privy to the live broadcasts that we do where we only have a few dozen people in there at a time. Definitely getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one personal attention there. I answer emails, personal emails every single day in there. Um, uploading new lessons every single month, a new hour of material every single month, along with lots of jam tracks, nearly 600, and the list goes on and on, okay? I mean, I literally could go on forever. Um, should I get live lessons or stay online? Which is better? Um, I have a video for that. There's, there's give and take. Um, Live lessons are very, very expensive, but you can ask questions. But if you know what you're looking for, live lessons are very, very efficient and very cheap, and 
uh, I mean, I I do I do online lessons all the time. Um, people say, "Oh, I thought you were a guitar teacher." I am, but I mean, I know this much about guitar compared to what I what I could know. Um, so I mean, there's so much to know, and that's every guitar player. Anybody that says anything other than that a, is not being honest, or they're just straight up lying. You know. Jeff, you're a veteran in disability and can't afford two hundred dollars either. Sorry, Jeff. Stick around with us, okay? Hang out with us because uh, uh, stick around for Veterans Day. We're going to do something special for you, okay? Just stick around there. Hey, if you only had to clean, uh, if you've only had a clean amp sound for three other pedals, oh gosh, I missed it. I'm sorry. It went by way too quickly. Oh, hold on. If you, okay, here you go. Hey, if you only had a clean amp sound, what three other pedals? would be your go-to pedals for blues, David's saying. Okay, I'll show you. Let's go to the pedal cam. Um, so first off, um, I love the looper pedal. Okay, looper pedal is so important to me. I have two of them. I have one in the, in the back of the line. I got one in the front of the line. Um, and if you want to know more about that, I cover that in my pedal tour that's on, your, that's on YouTube. Just search Your Guitar Sage Pedal Tour, T-O-U-R. Okay, and um, so a looper pedal is quintessential for any for anything because you want to be able to play things and uh, play off of your own music. Um, you know, like I was doing earlier. That's what the looper pedal's for. That's this. Whoops. That's this little guy going right here. It's right here. So I can. So a looper pedal is really important. Um, in my opinion, the next most important pedal would be this Line 6 M5, an absolute beast of a pedal. It has hundreds of effects in it. Run and go get one today. I wish I had stock in Line 6 because I'm a big endorser of these, uh, these pedals and they don't give me a daggone thing. But that's okay. At least you know it's honest, right? Um, so there you go, Line 6 M5. This is amazing because it has so many effects in it. You can only play one at a time, but it has everything you can imagine. It has everything that's on this board and more into here. Now, there's a reason that I won't go into why I have all these other ones. I'll, I'll tell you that in the pedal tour that I have on YouTube. Otherwise, um, the last pedal that I would say is this OCD in no particular order either. The OCD, I love that pedal because it just has such a great tone. It's an absolutely amazing pedal and um, I, can, I can get killer tones out of it. So those are the three pedals that I would recommend to you. Uh, Paul's saying LR Bags Anthem. Yep, that's it. I can play Hendrix major chords uh, without barring, but index on top two uh, strings and my pinky on high E. As soon as they try to bar the index, the bar sounds bad. How can I fix that? Um, <clears throat> Eddie, watch my video on that on YouTube because I could, I could give you a slight explanation here, but it's not going to help you like that video well. So on YouTube, open up another tab and type in Your Guitar Sage um, Hendrix. I believe I teach it with the, the, I know I do, I have a video for it and I teach you how to do that. Okay, in lots of detail, a lot more detail than I could, that I could go right now. Um, pedal cam is awesome, yeah, thank you. Oh, you have an RC3 looper, that's a, it's a great one. Uh, okay, do you teach any open tuning lessons? As Keith Richards said, you only need five strings and three fingers. <laughs> Byron, I personally don't love open tunings, although I'll say that Keith Richards is, is the best who does it uh, because it doesn't sound like open tunings. What I don't like about open tunings is it always sounds Celtic and um, I'm not a Celt. <laughs> uh, no, I don't, uh, it's just to me, it always sounds so tonal. And I don't like that sound. It's like always oh, the tonal, the tone is always going through the whole thing. Every now and then that's fine, but but for me, like for realistically playing, it just doesn't sound very good. But with that being said, I don't have any lessons on. I have one lesson on YouTube on uh, drop D tuning, which is fairly simple to do. And uh, because I'm still learning how to play the guitar the regular way, to me to to detune it a bunch of different ways is just. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like making things more complicated. Um, all right, more questions. Folks, $200 off the Unstoppable Guitar System today. You heard me right. Literally $200 off. It's 36 cents per lesson. 68 hours 
of material inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. New material going up every single month. Jam tracks, uh, live broadcast every single month. Not here. Live broadcast inside the Unstoppable, just those folks, okay? Eric, um, how do they mix scales? For example, someone is in A minor, suddenly is in the key of D minor. How do they mix them? Well, it doesn't have to do with the scales as much as it has to do with what's playing in the background, okay? Um, so then that means the key is changing or something about the chord is changing. Um, jazz does this a lot. They play on top of the chords. If it's a D minor chord, they might play D minor. If it's an A minor chord, they might play A minor. Um, and it's a very, it has a real specific sound. Sometimes it doesn't sound right. It sounds like you're playing the wrong notes. So if you love that jazz sound where it sounds like you're kind of playing outside the scale, then look into that more. Otherwise, stick to just playing in your key. That's what 99, um, <laughs> Glenn's saying, let me forgive you from, from a Celt. Um, nice. Um, so stick to the key. That's my suggestion to you. Singing and playing the guitar at the same time. Any tips? Yes, watch my video on YouTube. Type in your guitar stage, singing, and playing. But just like the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope, you got to know the lyrics by heart and the melody by heart before you play, put them both together. You got to know the chords by heart before you bring the two together. Think about a juggler. He's having a problem juggling three balls. And he's like, hmm, I wonder if a fourth ball would help. You go, you're an idiot, right? Well, we got to look at ourselves and not saying we're an idiot, but we got to say, dude, you're doing too much. Get good at playing the chords. Don't mess up at playing the chords. Sing the song. Don't mess up at playing, singing the song. And then watch that video, singing and playing your guitar stage on YouTube. And I'll show you how to go to the next level, which is basically like bringing those two together, but in what steps to do that, okay? And by the way, I have a whole section of that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? I'm placing my question the second time. Um, I have difficulty singing with complex strumming chords. How, does, how do I synchronize it? Watch, do, do everything that I just said in the, very last, in the very last question. Watch that video. What section of the UGS website uh, would be best to learn to play finger style like Mark Knopfler? I have a whole finger picking section inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. That's where you wanna go, you know? Um, okay, uh, goodbye sweet strat and congrats to surprise bros of lucky bastard, Jeff is saying. Um, okay, how come some days I can play everything, but other days I can't seem to play anything, Michael's saying. Uh, a couple things, Michael, it's you're not playing enough, bottom line. You're just not playing enough because I have the same problem. I teach all the time. I'm constantly teaching. I'm writing. I'm creating. And I don't get to play the guitar as much as I would like to, so I'm not as consistent as I would like to be. It's consistency is what you're going for here. The more you do something, repetition, the more it's ingrained and it goes into your subconscious. You have to consciously put it into your subconscious by playing it over and over and over again. That's the problem there, Michael. Eric, any singing tips? Zoom. Um, yes, do it a lot and uh, watch the video on YouTube, Your Guitar Sage, singing and playing guitar or singing and playing, okay? Great, we've still got uh, 337 folks inside the chat. If I bump over to YouTube, I'm gonna see that chat flying away. It is, because some folks are not, and that's fine if you just wanna chat amongst yourselves here, but if you wanna get your questions answered, you really do wanna hang over. You wanna to go to yourguitarsage.com slash live, because I'm not looking at the chat on YouTube. You guys hear me? I'm not doing that, because we're only at the one place. Same thing with Facebook. If I go over to Facebook right now, I see folks chatting over there. Um, but I'm not answering questions over there because I can only be in one place at a time, okay? Um, okay, great questions. Great questions. Other ones, what you got for me? What you got today? Man, you guys are hanging in there. I love it. And yes, congratulations to all the winners. We're having a blast here. Folks, while we're waiting for the next question, if you've been thinking about getting in the program, if you're been if you're serious about playing guitar, look at people say to me all the time, I want to be the best or I want to be amazing. Yes, this, that, and the other thing. How do I do that? How do you do that? You do it by being intense. You do it by immersing yourself in whatever it is that you're trying to do. If you want to get good at guitar, you got to immerse yourself and you got to have good instruction. And obviously you got to practice. Just sitting there and wishing is not going to help you. So get serious. If you want to get serious, I'm offering you half price off of the, my, my flagship product. It's the, the top product that I have. I have other courses. I have the number one course on Udemy, 
great, congratulations, yay, uh, but it's not nearly as fulfilled, as big as the Unstoppable Guitar System, and it's $200 off, nearly the price of my course on Udemy. So very important, okay? What's the difference between UGS and the course on Udemy? I just went over it. Um, I do live broadcasts on Unstoppable Guitar System. I haven't done that with Udemy yet. I'm thinking about it, but I have not done it yet. Um, I answer questions every single day in the Unstoppable Guitar System. Way more videos inside Unstoppable Guitar System. Nearly 600 jam tracks in Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, new material being uploaded every single month in UGS. Whole nine years. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's it's definitely a, a more a more robust product for sure. What kind of moonshine am I drinking? I'm drinking Berkey filtered moonshine today. This is like just about the purest water you can get. Love it. But everybody says that because in Tennessee, that's what you drink out of a mason jar. Is you drink moonshine, right? Oh my gosh, that would be a lot. Are there any songs you suggest for someone who's just starting out uh, using chord doodling? Aaron, I'd say use your own chords. You know what I mean? Just do your own thing. And, um, you know, play chords and come up with your own stuff. Otherwise, on YouTube, type in your guitar sage chord noodling. Uh, if someone's asking, Russ is saying, if you had less than $500, what guitar and amp would you buy? Any particular brands you like best? Listen to me right now, folks. Listen. In the description of this video, you're going to see a link that says something like yourguitarsage.com gear, something like that, or your um, kit.com slash yourguitarsage. I've created a store here recently that has all my recommendations for picks, amps, guitars, capos, um, many, 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 many items in this store. Not that many. I don't know, maybe, maybe 50 at the most. But nonetheless... These are my recommendations, the ones that I use, okay? The ones that I'm using all the time. They're proven. Uh, I don't buy stuff that's crap, and I don't review stuff that's crap. So that stuff is the best, okay? So if you're looking for under 500 bucks, and I think you said, an, was it an amp or was it a guitar? Let me see. What's the best guitar and amp? you would buy any particular brands you would like best. Okay, so here's the deal. You could, you could, for 500 bucks, if you bought these used, you could do it. Get yourself a Fender Blues Junior, okay? If you want a tube amp, if you have pedals. If you don't have pedals, get yourself a Line 6 Amplify. It's A-M-P-L-I-F-Y. Get yourself a Line 6 Amplify. They have a 75 watt and 150 watt. They're not gonna be loud enough to play in a band, but they're, but they have, they're loaded with effects that you can use on your smart devices. Amazing. Okay, and you get these for cheap. And um, I would say go with like an Epiphone Les Paul, you know, like a two, three, four hundred dollar guitar there, um, or a mid grade Fender Stratocaster. Um, that's that's going to get you set up. Uh, I said kit store. Yes, Dave. Um, the description, the video, the link for that's in the video description. So wherever you're at right now, I think we have it up there. Uh, but there you go. Jason, Jason just put that up. Thank you so much. Uh, folks on who are at, in the chat room right now, you can see right there, it's yourguitarsage.com slash gear. Looking to upgrade the pickup in my strats. Any thoughts on the Fender noiseless pickups? I think they're cool that they don't have noise, uh, but just make sure that you're not, you're not sacrificing tone for the lack of noise. That's all, that's all I'll say about that. Um, I don't think they sound particularly bad or anything like that, but just make sure, okay? What do you think about Ernie Ball strings for acoustic guitar? I think they're fine. Uh, I wouldn't know the difference between, say, them and, and D'Addario. Does your guitar system follow a progressive pattern in learning, yes, or do you have to pick and choose your own lessons? Please explain this system. Yes, 100%. It's all step by step. In fact, there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Folks, we're talking about the unstoppable guitar system, the one that's $200 off today. There's beginner, intermediate, and advanced section. Beginner section is step by step. Don't stray from this. Just do these in order, okay? Once you get to the intermediate and advanced sections, obviously intermediate would be before advanced, so there's an intermediate theory section, there's an advanced theory, there's an intermediate technique, there's an advanced technique, um, and so on and so forth. But even within those, you drill down and you have you have series. So maybe I would have like Travis picking, you know? Um, like uh, Travis picking is like... <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
something like that sort of thing. That's a simple Travis pick for you. Well, I have a whole section on Travis picking. That would be like an advanced plus or advanced. And But that is step by step. So everything is step by step in order. In fact, Chris and I just went over the whole course the other day and made sure that everything was step by step so that no one would get lost. 100% in order. You can't mess up. Um, okay. So um, someone's asking here, when you play out, do you go through the board or mic your amp? I always mic my amp because when you go through the board, it just doesn't have the same sound. With that being said, if you're using something like Line 6 products that are meant to go straight through the board, those do sound pretty magnificent. Yeah, so um, so in that case, I'd say you're, you're probably fine there. Okay, very happy. Let's see, why, why can't I move this? Um, okay. Never been comfy using a pick. Any tips there? Yeah, use a pick. Use it all the time. Carry it around with you. When you're driving, have it in your hands. Pick on the steering wheel. Pick on, on the, the seam on your pants. Carry a pick with you everywhere that you go. When you're walking around the store, carry a pick with you because you'll get comfortable with it in your hands. But that's the, the, the first place you gotta start is it has to get comfortable in your hands, okay? But the only way to get good at something is to do it. No one's comfortable with the pick at first. It's foreign. Why well, I dropped it, you know? It's foreign, it, it, but you get used to it and you get better at it. Also, the type of pick, if you have a thinner pick, it's gonna, gonna fall out of your hands less. And then as you get better at it, you'll, you'll probably thicken the pick up. How often do you change strings? If one string is going out, should I change uh, the only the broken string or all strings? Well, you're asking me, I, I only change the one string unless it's time. And if I'm going in the studio or I'm playing out live or something like that, then I'll change all the strings or I'm doing a video or something like that. But I don't love changing strings and my strings tend to, to sound really bright all the time. I don't have anything. Uh, some folks have like crazy acids in their skin. I mean, these strings uh, are probably the same ones that have been on here now for for a few years. And did I say that? And they, they look like they're brand new. They just do. I don't know why. Uh, and I play them a lot. So Eric, what are your thoughts on refretting a guitar with fatter frets? Play a guitar with fatter frets and see if you'd like it. A lot of folks love fat frets um, because of the feel of it. And, uh, and that's great, but just make sure that you're doing it because it feels good to you, not because of what someone suggested. That's a great way to, to lose money and get frustrated. Okay, all right, I'm jumping to the, to the, to the very bottom of the chat, so I might have skipped somebody. Uh, how can I cure uh, neck diving on SG models? Neck diving. Uh, if you mean, if you mean um, the fact that those early SGs, like the you know, 60, 61, that the, 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 the heel, um, wasn't very secure, there's no way around that. That's the problem That's the problem with those guitars. That's why I didn't get, I mean, I wanted an older one, but this one was a 69, uh, which was when I was born. So I thought that was cool, but they fixed that, that weak uh, neck bit, you know. Uh, S Stephanie lost the feed, she lost the video feed. Well, I think we're still going, so uh, just refresh. What are the best acoustic strings for, for the beginner? Uh, vibe strings. I love vibe strings. Go with vibe strings. They're amazing and they're on all my acoustics. Eric, memorizing all the different patterns of a particular scale on the neck has proven to be a daunting task for me over the years. Any advice? Uh, memorizing all the, all the positions. Yeah, watch my video. I mean, I obviously anything that I say to you on, that, on YouTube, I have in the unstoppable guitar system on steroids, okay? I, I, why, why, and I can't give all that stuff for free on YouTube, otherwise I would have to go back to my day job and I couldn't be sitting with you for hours here answering your questions, right? So I got I have a course. Um, but with all that being said, I do have a video on YouTube that, that's actually going pretty viral right now and it's like no one scale, know them all. And it's this idea of how you can take that scale and I just spit, and uh, how you can know that scale all over the fretboard. Watch that video, no one scale, know them all. And that will help you with understanding these patterns. But really, it's just repetition. If you want to do it, it's repetition. It's what ha what's happening is you're not learning it as fast as you want to learn it. This is the bane of all guitar players. And uh, whenever you get frustrated like that, it's you got to say, it's always practice more. Always, always, always practice more uh, repetition. But there's also little tricks like that. So it's a good. That's a great question. I lost all my gear in Santa Rosa Fire. Can you help me get new gear? I can. I'm so sorry to hear that, my friend. Yes, I can. 
uh, several ways. One, watch these broadcasts, and I give away stuff every single month. So start there, and then also uh, check out the store. For those that you don't don't know what I'm talking about, yourguitarstage.com slash gear or kit.com slash yourguitarstage. The link for that's in the description of this video. Uh, you're so welcome, Joy. I just started uh, using Schecter, and they are awesome and not expensive. Please try one, buddy. Yeah, Schecters are, are great, great guitars, in fact. Yes. Uh, neck diving is when the neck is heavier than the body. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, I got what you're talking about. Yes, I experienced that with my SG2. The thing has, the neck goes on forever. It's like, you're way, way out there. Um, and it's just, and the body is not very heavy. So, uh, you know, I put a little bit of weight sometimes into when I'm playing. So I'll, I'll literally, you know, put some weight onto, onto the... Um, the body of the guitar to get the guitar to come up there, but also, you know, I'll grab the guitar a little bit. Uh, make sure your, your strap is in the right place and it's comfortable. Uh, Eddie is asking about injuries and in specific exercises. Yes, on YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage, and I, it's also an unstoppable, goes without mentioning any, anything that's on YouTube, with the exception of songs. Any of that technique stuff is on steroids inside the unstoppable guitar system. Okay, and I have uh, a video, a couple videos that I created. You could type in your Guitar Sage hand or injury uh, because I put one up recently. One of my previous students who actually works for me now, uh, Jay, amazing guy, a great vocalist in, in a band now and has his own success and is amazing. Uh, but nonetheless, um, and he started off from nothing, and he is, he's the lead singer for this great band now, and, and he's an amazing player. So there you go. It's about practice, and he'll tell you so. But he developed carpal tunnel because um, he because of, of, of how he was approaching the guitar. Uh, he was developing bad habits. We weren't taking lessons anymore, uh, so I couldn't see what he was doing, but he developed some bad habits, and he got carpal tunnel. And he went to the doctor, and we created this series. So um, on YouTube, watch that series. It's two videos, but the first one uh, talks about some specific things, and the second one talks about exercises to fix that. I'm stuck on minor blues, pentatonic. What other scales would uh, for blues would you suggest? Man, it's all about it's all about major or minor blues. It really is. Uh, you can use uh, diatonic scales like minor, major, but it's just not going to have that same sound. Dave, my guess would be is that you just need to get more comfortable with that scale, right? It's like if I hand a hammer to somebody and they're grabbing it by the iron end and they're using the wood part of it, well, it's not going to be a very useful hammer and they're going to be looking for another tool when they just need to take the hammer and turn it around. So I have, in fact, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, I have a whole series on minimalistic blues. And basically what I do is I walk you through four notes and if you and you just literally just use those four notes and you can play some amazing solos with just those four notes. Seriously, you don't believe me, check it out. I'll give you your money back if you don't like it, okay? But I have lots of series like that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System about bringing the blues to life because, like you said, you know, you get the scale there and you're like, okay, I'm playing the blues, but it doesn't sound like it. And people are doing this. They're going... I don't know why it's not sounding bluesy. I'm bluesing the blues scale. And you're like, well, you're just playing the blues scale. You're not playing licks. You're not going... You know, like we're, we're speaking. We use words to speak, but we use phrases to get the job done. Because if you just talk like this all day long, like you were reading out of a dictionary and you weren't using inflection or anything like that, it'd get real annoying and you turn me off. But I'm, I'm saying, pick up that guitar and let's do this now. You know, we're used to speaking in phrases, so you have to play in phrases as well. Does the extra $100 on the, on the katana, 100 worth over a cheaper katana? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what a katana is. Am I dumb? I don't know. How can I play two octave song? How can I play two octave song with chords? I don't understand that question, Ron. If you could phrase it another way, it'd be great. What are the best straps you can buy? You know, a strap is a, a strap's a strap. I, you know, I don't know if there's one that's so amazing, but I love these Planet Waves ones, and I swear I think they may be under ten bucks. If not, they're maybe fifteen bucks. But I think they're like seven dollars. They're nylon. Uh, since I'm plant-based, uh, lover of animals, vegan, and all that stuff, I don't use uh, I don't use leather. No, these shoes are not leather, although they look like it. They're not. 
but um, so I love nylon. And um, in fact, this is totally plastic and nylon. And these are great because they lock. They have this little locking mechanism like this. You got to do this guy here and then boom, it locks on your guitar. So cool. So I love these Planet Waves and I don't know the name of them. Chris, we need to put these on the store. I'm going to put that in the hallway there so that so that those will go up to the store. Um, we'll add those. So, and the store I'm talking about, kit.com slash yourguitarsage. Also, yourguitarsage.com slash gear. Okay, that's where you can learn about the, um, about all that, okay? Uh, Thierry is saying, is the $200, um, is the $200 a one-time payment or could one split it into three payments? I think the way we have it in there, Thierry, is it's a one-time payment. Uh, the, th you know, the, th uh, installment plan is for is the normal price of the course. That's the way we have it set up in there. Um, can you show me the high E chord? Uh, can you show me the high E chord? Well, I mean, the cage system is probably what you're talk what you're referring to. That's going to help you with that. Uh, I have a whole series of that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Not only teaching you major chords, but also teaching you minor chords, seventh chords, minor seventh chords, the whole nine yards. Um, Inside the Unstoppable on YouTube, I have a little video on it. Uh, just type in your guitar stage cage, but it teaches you how to take these chords and how to how to figure them out in all these different positions. These are all E chords, by the way. I can't play that one at the top. I can't get my hand out around there. But those are several high E chords uh, if you want. Um, oh, great. John, just bought the course. Can't wait to get started and myself uh, to the next level. Love it, John. Nice. John took advantage of our great offer today, $200 off. John, say hey to me when, you, when you're in there, buddy, and I, will, and I will email you back. I check those messages every day. So that's awesome, bud. Uh, very cool. Again, $200 off, friends. If you've been looking to get in, to, if you're serious about playing guitar, 200 bucks, $200 off. It's literally $0.36 cents a lesson over 68 hours of video, okay? Do you recommend practicing standing up or sitting, more than sitting? Uh, I, always, I always suggest standing up just because it's, more, it's, it's a lot more healthy for you. In fact, dear God, I've been sitting in this chair. I feel like I'm cramping up. So, hi. Uh, so, um, it's like I gotta stand up every now and then or stretch my, I forget that when I'm ever in these broadcasts and I, and I get up and I'm like, oh, and I work out a lot too, so there you go. Um, but I say stand up because it's healthier, and because if you're if you're playing out live and you're standing up, if you're standing up, it's uh, you got to practice standing up if you're going to be standing up. If you're always sitting down when you're playing out live, then sit down. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. 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 Okay, pensions suck. Oh well, Dave is saying. Uh, I hate that, Dave. Um, okay, oh, so kind. Thanks for sharing your big brain with us. It's always helpful. You're so welcome, Derek. I don't know how big my brain is, but I, but but I give you what I got that's in there. <laughs> and there may, may be a lot in there, may not be. All right, more questions. And again, a chat roll is still flying away over at YouTube. If you're wondering why I'm not answering your question on YouTube, it's because we're over at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Same thing with my Facebook folks. Um, so head over there. I see questions going up right now. YouTube. YouTube. If you see YouTube in the left-hand corner, you're not on the right page. Go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. That's where I'm answering questions. Same thing with my Facebook folks. Head on over there. Also, that's where the PDF is at, okay? Does Your Guitar Sage track progress uh, and is it offline? It's not offline. It does track progress. The new version of it is, which we're about to release any day now. Uh, so hang in there. But yes, it'll show you if the videos that you've completed, et cetera. So it will show you your progress. Do you think that sounding good on the guitar means you need to play with feeling? Yes, by all means. Otherwise, you're just playing chords and copying others. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with copying others if you're playing it with feel, you know. Uh, learning to en en enjoy playing will also improve how you sound, 100%. Think about this. If you're kissing somebody and you're just like, purse lips, press against lips, mm, mm, mm. How passionate is that? 
But when you're passionate about somebody, how do you kiss them? Play music that way. Eric, as a newbie, seems I can only lay down two fingers at a time. Any suggestions on how to land all fingers at the same time when making a chord? Great question. Watch my video. It's uh, for, for, for those folks that are like, hey, I'm not that serious about guitar, but I do want to know how to play some basics. Go to yourguitarsage.com slash 30, and there's some basic lessons in there to get you up and running, okay? For those that are serious about it, you'll want to take advantage of the $200 off today because that's going to be every guitar player, you, any guitar lesson you need for just about the rest of your life because uh, I keep adding to it, okay? But in some of those beginning lessons, I talk about how to fret these chords. And it, it's uh, people think that all the fingers are going down at the same time because they're going down so quickly together that it looks like that, okay? For the same reason I could, you know, uh, when a drummer hits a flam, they're taking two sticks and they're going, right? And it sounds like it's the same time, but it's not. This would be at the same time. And that's not even the same time because if we were to slow this down, you'd see that one hand would hit slightly before the other. Case in point is this. When you are gra when I'm grabbing a chord, it looks like all fingers are going down at the same time, but realistically, there's a finger that's going down before another or, or giving a little bit more pressure before another. And that's how you want to think about building your chords. I like to build them from the low notes up and then get accustomed to that. And then what will happen is the gap between this finger going down, this finger, and this one will start closing up to where it seems like you're just grabbing them all at once. That's how you do it, okay? There is no other way to do it. You just do that, and that's and you'll feel that progress too. Someone's saying, uh, can you, uh, Eric, can you explain what they mean by phrasing over guitar shapes? Yeah, so like, um, you know, we got this, so phrasing over guitar shapes, well, phrasing is, you know, phrasing is this. Shut the door, please. You know, shut the door, please. That's a phrase. That's like, shut the door, please. You know, it's a phrase. It's something you say that's like a little section, a little thought. But if you're talking about playing over chords, which I have videos for this, you know, basically what you're doing is you're cognizant of the chord that's being played behind you. Why? Because if you're in a conversation with somebody and someone steers the conversation differently and you keep talking about the same thing, won't that be awkward? Yep. The answer is yes, and it will also be awkward if you're playing guitar and the music changes and you're not keeping up with it. More so, if or, or, or a lesser degree of that is when the chords change, you can still just play in the same key and it's fine, but there are notes that are going to sound better over some chords than other notes. So for instance, this, is, this chord progression here is A minor, G major, and F major, and then there's an E major in there. And basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing over the top of this. I'm not sure. Where, oh, here it is. Um, I'm going to be playing over the top of this, and I'm really going to accentuate those notes, okay? And you'll see me moving as the chords move, and that's what playing over the top of the chord is. So here's an A, A minor, F, or G, F, E, A minor, G, F, G, A, G, F, F, E. So I'll now go. This is a simple way. So I'm playing over the chord, real simply. So I can do this in different ways, right? an E minor form. So really 
say it's being cognizant of the chord that's being played and then pulling some notes out over it. Um, I talk about this a lot. Uh, a great solo, a very famous solo that does this a lot are the two solos in Comfortably Numb, where he was thinking this the whole time. He's just playing those chords, those arpeggios over those, over those chords, and it just sounds so perfect, okay? Okay, what do you think of the, fr of the frying pan shape? Uh, Dave, I think it's I think it's great, and I and I teach it, but I don't teach it as a frying pan shape. I just uh, I teach it as something else. But but uh, yeah, you know this. Um, basically, I have several lessons on this on YouTube. Obviously, a lot of them inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. But it's the idea that you can take this this little shape here. It's I'm probably adding a note from that that pie shape, that, or frying pan shape. And I could do the same thing right here. You know, um, and it's just, it duplicates itself. No one scale, know them all. It's basically the same concept, so check that out. Okay, if I use the capo on the third fret as a second guitar player, will that make the me play in thirds using the same chord shape as the first player? Great question. No, it will not. It won't work like that. But you can do it to harmonize with another guitar. But you just have to understand how to use the capo. So what you'd want to do is the free PDF that's at yourguitarstage.com slash live right now over to the right of the, the video. You download that, look at the, the bit about the capo, and <clears throat> you know, if you're in if you want to do the feel of G but in the key of C, let's say let's say we're playing in the key of G. We got G. Um, well watch this. Here, here you go. We got this background here. We got A minor, F and G, right? <laughs> So with the capo, we're open. Here I go. I got an A minor, G, F. Now my capo here at the fifth fret. I mean, there's, there's several different ways I could do this, but you get the idea. You can always harmonize at least with one, uh, with one way to capo. You can always harmonize at least one time, but sometimes two times. Uh, but it's not, but it's not like go up three frets. I know where you're going. I know where your brain's going. Um, but uh, Sasha's saying, I'm so confused. Sasha, the only reason you're confused is because you're you're taking you're you're getting a step before a step that you should have. That's the only reason. It's okay that you're confused. Everyone is confused when they get step seven before they get step six. You can have step six before step five. So if you're brand new to guitar, this is a great place to be, okay? Listen, we're giving $200 to you today, literally handing you 200 bucks for this unstoppable guitar system. It's gonna be $200 off up until Wednesday. That's when we're gonna stop it. And it's going back up to 400 bucks. Uh, there's 68 hours of material in there. If you're serious about guitar, get in there. If you're kind of not so serious about guitar, um, or you're just like, I just literally don't have $200. I'll never have $200 in the rest of my life. Uh, and if I did, I wouldn't spend it on you, Eric. Well, then you could check out yourguitarstage.com slash 30. That will help a lot with understanding some basics. And you got to start there. You got to start with the basics and then build up. If you're confused, it's okay. It just means that you're on the wrong step. You're taking a bigger step before the others, okay? Um, okay, okay. Are the videos in UGS downloadable? No, they are not because we've had, in fact, I have, I've had folks in my Udemy course, I say folks, I've had at least one guy um, take those and download them and upload them to YouTube. Not cool. Unless you try to work somebody out of a job to where they have to go work their desk job again. That's not very fun. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't. I don't want to go back to my desk job. I don't. This is much more fun. 
you know? This is not work, you know? I mean, it's work, but it's, it's fun work, okay? Uh, can you play a two octave major scale with with open chords, two octave major scale with open chords. I don't know what you mean by that, Ron. I can play a two octave major scale and I can play open chords, but um, but no, it's one, it, kind of one or the other. If you could explain that a little bit differently, I'm not sure what you meant, what you mean by that. Um, how does harmonizing work? How do you do it? Great question. Um, so basically, uh, oh, and by the way, Jason just put that link up on the screen there. If you go there, friends, it's going to automatically get you that $200 off. Uh, UGS 200, that's what you want to put in, yourguitarstage.com slash UGS $200, or 200, UGS 200, that will get you, or just hit that link that you see. Uh, for folks that are on YouTube and Facebook right now, you're not seeing it because it's not being put up there. It's being put up um, in the chat at yourguitarsage.com slash live. I know, I'm sorry, I say it a lot, but I see a ton of folks over there. So either they don't like, they're not listening to me or they're not hearing me. Um, okay. Okay. Is it possible to do your Les Paul video tricks, especially the clean versus dirty on a guitar with only two buttons, one volume and one tone button because I have an Epiphone Special GT with only those buttons. Is it possible to do your Les Paul video tricks especially? Um, yeah, I'd have to remember what I did in that video. I honestly don't remember. Can you please uh, work it that we can get the 200 off and do it in payments? Pretty please, Eric. Tammy, I'll have to I'll have to check about that, but I I don't I don't think we can do that. Uh, it's, yeah, don't think we can do that. It's kind of, it's also an incentive for folks who really are you know serious about this, and they're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm doing this thing. But again, if you don't like it, you get all your money back. Uh, okay. Okay. So someone uh, someone's saying I can't afford unstoppable guitar system until Friday, but the promo will be done then, and it'll be longer. Darian is saying. Uh, Darian, uh, I'll have Jason. Uh, address that there may be nothing we can do I'll have to see but Jason Jason will address that because um, he's good like that how do you find tabs and songs that correlate with the lessons uh, great 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 question um, there's a great site called ultimate-guitar.com and they have a massive uh, database full of tabs and uh, I, I use it all the time I love it it's fantastic and it, it and they've got really accurate tabs. If you look for the, the five-star ones and the ones that have been downloaded a ton, okay, do those. Start with those. Start with the five stars and then go with the one that's been downloaded the most. Okay, how, oh, sorry, Caesar, how does harmonizing work? I missed that one. I'm so sorry. So harmonizing works like this. If you take a scale and you play a scale, you got to know the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. If you're playing a one, the harmony guitar will be playing a three. So what that sounds like together, oh, if you're playing a two, the other guitar is playing a four. If you're playing a three, the other guitar is playing a five. You always add two scale notes, you always go up two scale notes and then you have your harmony. You've heard, right? I hate this song. Sorry. I do. I loathe it because I used to play it in a cover band and it, we played it terribly and I just don't like the song to begin with. So uh, anyhow, that's harmony. Those are thirds. Something like that. Okay, that's how, harmonize, how harmonizing works. It's fairly easy. If you know your scales, gotta know your major scales. Okay, would you please demonstrate hammer-ons and pull-offs? Hammer-on is when you pick a note and you hammer, you take your finger and you hammer the note. No one can do it at first. And if you do, you can do it every now and then, but not very well. And then a pull off is when you pick a note and you basically, you're almost finger picking, if you will, but with this hand, you pull it down and it does, and it does that. It creates a sound, you know, like Hendrix does. <laughs> Oh, 
those are a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. They sound real nice together, you know? Dave, I love Van Morrison. I do too, but that particular song. Uh, the music for Happy Birthday is two octaves. How can I play it with open chords? Ron, uh, it doesn't matter that it's in two octaves. You just play the chords. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter that the melody could be could be ten octaves. Um, not that you'd hear that, but it could be. And then you just play the the same chords that are that are for that song. You know, I don't even know what they are. Mm. I don't even know. I, I think I teach it someplace, or but but I, I we won't get into that right now. But you use the same open chords. The melody doesn't matter. A note's a note's a note. What no matter what octave it's in. Does that make sense? Um, okay, Eric. I'm left-handed. and I can't find good left-handed guitars. A country in, in in my country. The ones that I found here are overpriced. If I buy a right-handed acoustic guitar and change the strings upside down, is it okay? I started with a left-handed electric guitar two years ago. No, it's not okay unless you change the nut and the bridge. And I wouldn't do that myself. I'd have an expert do that because you can get into a lot of, you can really mess things up. I would not suggest doing it yourself. Uh, but can you do it? Yep, you can. That's the only thing you got to do. My wife's a lefty and we've done this with several of her guitars, but we've had a pro do it. Okay. I'm a beginner guitar player, also interested in ukulele. Would it be better to learn one before trying to learn the other? No. On YouTube, type in your guitar stage, uke guitar, because I will show you how the two are related and you can do both of them at the same time. With that being said, ukulele is easier and if we're following steps and trying not to get frustrated, learn the ukulele a bit first and then start sneaking in the guitar. The shapes are the same, the tuning is the same, but obviously it's four strings. So it's basically the bottom four strings. A ukulele is basically the bottom four strings of the guitar capoed at the fifth fret. That's what a ukulele sounds like. You know, so if I did something like this, you'd go, oh, it sounds like a ukulele. You know, it's basically the same. The same uh, sonic area. Okay, great questions. Can you show us a mix of 12 bar blues going between minor and major blues at all, please? Any chance of some tab on your on one of your lessons about it as well? I don't do tabs just because they take so long, Simon. And I believe I have a whole video on that playing the major blues. But basically it's like this. You know, if you're playing an A, A blues, then um, that's a lot of reverb. If you're playing an A blues, A minor, but if you're playing, that's A minor blues, but if you're playing A major blues, and you take the same form, but you put your pinky on the A, and now, as opposed to, does that make sense? So you're just moving that, um, you're just moving that down. Yes. Okay. When I noodle over a backing track, should I do what the actual, actual leads, or do my own? Well, do both. Uh, learn the lead, but then do your own stuff. Start improvising because if not, you're just gonna only be. Um, <clears throat> You're only, you know, you're only going to be um, playing what you know, you know, and you want to, you want to stretch out from there. So, uh, really important. Can I please sign the strap before sending to Italy? Yes, I will sign all over it. <laughs> Thanks, Antonio. Um, whatever you want me to do to it, I will, I will do it. Okay, unless you're playing the strings upside down like Hendrix. Although Hendrix didn't play his strings upside down. Uh, Dick Dale did, but Hendrix played his strings right side up, so he had the nut. Now, the guitar was upside down, so he played a strat like this, but I can assure you that the, that the bridge was set up correctly and so was the nut, but, the, but the, you know, the, the slots inside the nut have to be cut the right way. You have to flip the nut. So you could do that. You just take the nut out and flip it if you, if you can do that, if you're able to do that, um, if you have the wherewithal, but usually the nut doesn't come out unless you break it out. So, um, but that's the way Hendrix played it. He played it like this, but he just played it as a, as a, a lefty. 
So the, the, the strings were assembled the same way, but for a lefty. But Dick Dale did not. He played his guitar upside down. And that's fine too, you know. Love from Pakistan. What's up, Hassan? Hassan, how are you doing, sir? Uh, does UGS teach songs too? I don't want to just learn theory and technique. John, I teach all my, most all my songs are going to be on YouTube. But yes, I do teach songs inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Swing, blues, those sorts of bits. But like actual songs from other people, I just do that on YouTube. Uh, I just do that on YouTube, you know. Uh, there's there's some copyright issues as to why I do that. I'm not going to have it on my personal website, but on YouTube, it's it's kind of a permitted thing. Boy, I, the stories I could tell about that. Uh, is he still going? If you're speaking about me, I am. Is there any easier way to play the B minor chord? Unemployed, can't get your, get your course right now. Uh, no, there's not an easier way to play the B minor. It's just, it, you know, it is it is what it is. So it's a bar chord. But here's the deal. Watch my video called the effing F chord, E-F-F-I-N-G. Watch that. And um, that will uh, that will show you how to play the F the, the the same formation. Okay? If you have any problems with it, uh, go there and watch that. Okay. Good, good, good questions, man. Good, good questions. Yeah, cheat for the B minor pit pitbull is the same. Eric, when learning solos from songs, should I learn them note for note, or is there a way to improvise over my own, yet still sound reminiscent to the sound in the song? And if it's the latter, how do you do that? Eddie's saying. Um, Eddie, I am a stickler for, I mean, if Angus Young plays a solo, why would you embellish that, right? If Jimi Hendrix plays a solo, why would you change it? When I see people, when I see guys do this live, I'm like, oh man, it just makes me mad because I know that they one didn't take the time to learn it, or two they they didn't, they don't have the wherewithal to be able to do it. And so personally, I don't like it. It's not like I'm going boo or anything like that, but I just I just don't like that when they do that. So I'm a big fan of playing a, a solo note for note as closely as possible. There's something just really cool about that being able to do that. With that being said. Um, you know, you should be have the ability to improvise, and I teach tons of that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, uh, as well as a few a smattering of videos on YouTube and that sort of thing. Uh, but yes, very, very important um, to be able to improvise, and you need to know the scales, basically, in order to do that. And there's not a lot of them to know. On YouTube, type in your Guitar Sage scales, and I'll show you the scales you need to know and why. Okay, good questions, good questions, man. I'm in Nashville. I love Elvis, one of my friends. Can I shred? Not really. I don't feel like I'm a shredder. I used to do some of that in the 80s, but not, not so much anymore. Uh, hey, Eric, I've been playing for a few years now, and and every day, at least an hour, I learned the essential chords at your last year, uh, a year ago. I tried to come back to the, to the B7 chord and couldn't do it. Is this normal to not be able to play a standard chord after a while if you don't keep up with it every day? Yeah, 100%. You've got to keep up with it. Guitar, the knowledge won't leave you, but you've got to be practicing those fingers. It's very specific what we're doing on the guitar. And uh, yes, 100%. You will lose it fairly quickly if you, if you put it down. When you were demonstrating uh, harmonic harmonics lead, what do you mean by one or two pentatonic scales? I'm probably meaning form one and form two. So like form one is, form two is, okay, you can get those in the free ebook at Your Guitar Sage. Obviously, it's in uh, the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, I see we have a few folks still hanging around. 285 people still in the chat room. Um, and folks on YouTube, we have 391 people over there right now. I know you're not getting your questions answered there. I would love to help you out, Big Daddy Hobo, and everybody else who's asking questions there. But I'm not there right now. So please go to, the link's in the descriptions right underneath the video, yourguitarsage.com slash live. That's where I'm at right now. And I will answer your question if you put it over there. Same thing with Facebook. I got 36 people over there still, it looks like, I think. Um, but that's not where I'm at. I'm at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Actually, 15 people over it on, on Facebook, so not a ton. That's okay. Okay, so um, here we go. More, more, more questions, more questions. 
Oh, Albert King, Upside Down. Did he play Strings Upside Down? I didn't know that. I did not know that. Eric, best way to practice rhythm? Practice it. That's uh, that's a pretty vague question. Uh, it's a vague question. Uh, not, not no offense, but, but just uh, it's it's big. It's a big question. How do you practice rhythm? Practice rhythm. That's the way to do it. Do it. Repetition, 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 repetition. When you're learning guitar, should you switch from from an electric to an acoustic while learning, or should you just stick to one type of guitar? You know, I'm pretty guitar agnostic, so I like to jump back and forth between guitars all the time. A lot of guys, they get real stuck on, especially if you're a real precision player and you have a real specific way that you play all the time. Like Inve Malmsteen, you're never gonna see him with, a, with an, an SG, but he's so impeccable on the guitar, he doesn't let any variations throw him off. Whereas me, I may grab this guitar and that guitar and the other guitar, and I do pretty well at all, all of them, but I'm not playing like Inve. You know, but he also just plays one specific style. So, you know, when you have variables the same everywhere, it's going to make you uh, more accurate, but it's not like an honest accuracy because you're just doing the same thing over and over again, right? But if you're playing different, so, so for me, I say play, play what makes you happy. Start, start there. When you're learning guitar, should you switch from an electric to, okay, we just answered that one, sorry. Um, why? Is this not working? Okay, there we go. What's the best way to make all backing tracks come out at the same volume? I don't know that. That's a that's a computer question. Sorry, I can't answer that one because I don't know the answer to that one. Are all these studios you have in the same place? They are. They're all in the same place. Indeed. Do you have any uh, six, eight, or nine string guitars? If so, do you like them? I don't have any. I mean, I could get them, but... I, you know, to me, six strings is plenty. I'm still trying to learn the instrument, so uh, to me, I'm not, I'm not going to confuse myself with more strings. Just me personally, but um, one of my guitar, one of my students who's a great, great player, he's gone off to Berkeley now, and uh, he bought us an eight-string guitar, and he was doing some really cool stuff with it. And uh, but it always just looks so awkward to me. Hey, David just came over from YouTube. Yay, the one guy who is listening, who went from YouTube to yourguitarsage.com slash live so that I can answer his questions. Yay, you win the prize, David. Um, you win something, the cool guy award. If I'm a classical player, would it be harder for me to play an electric? No, it's different. It's like, it's like if you're going from a sedan to a Porsche or a sports car because it's going to be a lot more active and a lot more you know you're gonna touch the strings and you're gonna be like wow that's just loud you know what I mean um so there's that the strings are thinner right nylon strings are very thick uh, so it's gonna feel different you were talking about scale degrees and you were explaining harmony weren't you yes I was indeed uh what one song would you suggest for a beginner I have many many of them how about he stopped loving her today by George Jones that's a great one but I have tons of them at, your, at uh, my YouTube channel. What scale besides the minor pentatonic do you prefer? Um, I love the major scale and I love the pentatonic scale. Major for knowing music theory and explaining music theory and the pentatonic scale, blues scale for, for, uh, harm, for improvisation. What one song would you suggest for beginners? We said that one. What is a fair amount of time to practice guitar each day? I can answer that one easily. If you want to be uh, really, really super good, you eat, sleep, and breathe the guitar. If you're totally fine being a mediocre player, just practice it a little bit amount. And if you're totally fine with sucking, then don't pick it up very often. Just pick it up when it hits when the when the when it hits you. But there is no fair amount. Um, you know, I could say an hour a day, and for some of you that are gonna say, oh, I don't have an hour, and other you, other you are gonna say, well, I can't get very good doing an hour a day. So it really just depends. Uh, you know where you're at and you know where you want to be, so you're going to need more of that, more, more practice, more time on the instrument to get better. Um, all right, great, great question. Um, friends, if you're at YouTube, if you're at Facebook, yourguitarstage.com slash live. Also, look over to the right of the chat screen at, at yourguitarstage.com slash live, and you're going to see a little yellow button. Smash that yellow button if you are serious about guitar. I'm giving you 200 bucks today off the Unstoppable Guitar System. It's basically 36 cents per lesson. 
I don't know of any place that offers lessons that cheap. In this course, there's over 68 hours and I'm adding new material every single month live broadcasts with just a small group of people so the chat roll isn't going a million miles an hour you know i have to post your question 10 times i also answer email in there every day uh we have over we have over 500 jam tracks in there and, and putting more in there all the time so um so check that out okay <laughs> could you show us how to play a b chord asking for a friend i love that bit here's a b chord you can try to eke that last note out or right here or B7. Okay, those are in the free PDF that you can find at, at uh, yourguitarstage.com slash live. How do you position the right hand when strumming? Is it stable or, or the wrist moves? Um, you know, when I'm strumming, I mean, my wrist will move maybe a little bit. I mean, you can do that. But really, for me, I, 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 that's my pivot is the elbow. Uh, Chuck Berry punched Keith Richards for touching his amplifier. <laughs> I believe it. I, t I totally believe it. That was uh, his hero, too. That was... Chuck Berry was Keith Richards' hero. How about that? Eric, can you demonstrate exercise number two out of the dexterity exercise earlier? No, I, I did not, Jamie. I don't believe I did. Um... Okay, okay, what, yeah. Ron, you keep posting that question about the beginners, but uh, I think I answered that one. Uh, what do you think about G&L guitars? They're great, they're fantastic. Jason, thank you for posting the $200 off. Um, yourguitarstage.com slash UGS200 if you want that $200 off. One more question, Eric. I learned most of my playing on an acoustic uh, using heavier strings to challenge myself and because I prefer the punch and articulation. Now when I play classic 50s Strat, this is a classic 50s with heavy strings. I tend to make a mess out of the chords um, due to the heavy handedness with it. How do I break such a habit? Um, and because I prefer the punch and articulation. Now the 50s classic and heavier strings, I tend to make a mess out of the chords to, uh, with the heavy handedness. How do I break out of such a habit? You just, you know, the only way to break a habit is to, is to practice whatever it is you're trying to get out of. So, uh, you know, you want to practice those lighter strings more and more. But, you know, you get worked into a, a, a rut, and that's what happens. It's like whatever you practice, you're getting good at. If you're practicing the wrong things, you're getting good at the wrong thing. So you want to practice whatever it is you want to get good at, but just do more of that, more and more and more and more. I'm an intermediate blues harp player, still studying, and I want to learn some guitar from scratch. I guess I already have some music knowledge that can be useful. Any advice for people who play or want to play another instrument? Richard, if you play another instrument, it's going to make playing guitar a lot easier because there's bits and pieces you know about phrasing, you know about feel. Dear God, if you're playing blues harp, you know how to play blues guitar. You just got to pick up the guitar and learn the scale. Really, seriously, I guarantee you, you'd take it to it like that, especially with my minimalistic blues and call and response videos that I have inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. You're gonna be, be killing it. Also, you could practice your, your harp uh, call and response there as well. What type of slide do you use? I have lots of different slides. Uh, Jim Dunlop is one that I've got. I've got glass slides, brass slides, all different kinds, and I use them for different reasons depending on uh, the sound. So I don't have a favorite per se. Although I do have those in my store. Anybody who's looking for a slide or anything like that, I have a store, kit.com slash yourguitarsage or yourguitarsage.com slash gear. The link for that's in the description of this, in the video. Um, Robert from UK, is this still live? It is, our triads, oh look, Hobo Daddy. Hobo Daddy came over from YouTube, yoo-hoo. Are triads just the lower th strings of the bar chords? This would help me use them. On YouTube, you could type in your guitar sage triads. I have a whole series of this, okay? I got maybe one or two videos inside YouTube, but on Unstoppable, I have a massive series on triads. Triads are three notes, a three note chord. Usually it's a major chord or a minor chord, or it could be a diminished chord, but basically it's the three main notes to a chord, okay? Major, minor, and diminished chords have three distinct notes. You can have multiples of those notes, like several A's or several B's or C's or whatever, but it's three distinct notes, okay? And triads are basically when you just play those three notes, okay? And, um, and it's good to know those. 
for sure. And I teach those in, uh, you know, major steroid fashion in inside UGS. Uh, can I play a song, one that you think is pretty cool? Uh, Jerry Garcia is saying. So I play this one quite often. I just love this tune. Uh, friends, or, or, or uh, friends, what's it called? Kids. This is by uh, MGMT. So I teach that on, on YouTube as well. Can you please show us a few blues turnarounds at all? Simon, I have a video on YouTube. Type in your guitar stage turnarounds. Uh, but this one right here. The classic, right? Wherever your first finger is at, that's the key of your song. And so you're going to walk the string above it down in half steps. end up on your five chord. But watch that video on YouTube. It'll help out a ton. Okay, good, 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 good. Do you use the back end of the pick? I have before, but I don't love it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm learning fingerstyle on a Blue Ridge 2500 jumbo. Nice. Do you like your J200 for fingerstyle playing or something else? No, I love it for, for fingerstyle. Uh, I really do. I, I should probably get a dreadnought too, but... Um, but you know, uh, Antonio is saying, I vouch for Eric. I have lifetime access to YGS, UGS. I know YGS, UGS, that's, um, confusing to folks, but, uh, the unstoppable guitar system, your guitar sage. Um, it's, it is amazing. Antonio is saying, Antonio, thank you so much for letting us know that. And yes, Antonio is in the, the, uh, the program and we chat a lot in there. So do you have a review of the line six helix? No, but I've owned every other pedal that they've that they've done and i imagine that line i imagine that helix is amazing uh i love line six gear they do some great stuff okay I, eric i've not seen too many people use the c chord in the y shape at the third fret and fourth fret i'm not sure what you mean there my friend c chord <laughs> If you're talking about the, you know, you know, you know, I cover that in the cage system, but um, well, was there a question there? I don't know. I don't know if there was a question there. Okay, uh, sometimes I get a gig where I have to learn eight songs from a 14-song set by Saturday. I can learn the progression, no problem, but what I can't do with the solos, there's just not enough time to learn them note for note. Eddie, what's the question? Um, you can improvise but you gotta learn to improvise or don't play a solo. So you either learn the solo, learn how to improvise, which I teach massively inside the, inside the course, or you don't play the solo. I don't know, you could dance during that part too. Four, four things you could do. Uh, but no, honestly, I'm not sure um, what else you would do there, you know? Make a big distraction. Light your guitar on fire, pull some Jimi Hendrix or something, you know? People would love that. I use GHS and D'Addario electric strings. Eric, I can't get Eric, I can't messages on the screen together. Been here for one hour and very frustrated for IT. Um, I'm here, my friend. That would have been that have been a good place to put your question. Um, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, okay, here we go. I see lots of ads and can hear Eric, but can't watch messages and Eric at the same time. Um, okay, that's on your end, my friend. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to help you there. Okay, do any of your lessons include how to play with a slide? Yeah, on YouTube, just type in your guitar stage slide. And I have some bits and pieces inside the Unstoppable Guitar System about that. Um, I don't, I don't claim to be some great slide player, so it would be a lie for me to teach it like, I, like I'm like i amazing at it, because I'm not. But I do know the basics of it. I do understand how slide works and how great players play slide, and that's exactly how I teach it. So you don't have to be amazing at something to be able to teach it the right way, believe it or not. 
I could show you the techniques. It's just, uh, and I could play it. I mean, I could play some slide. Um, you know, I can play it, but uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't think I'm super good at it. Uh, anyhow, I don't need to show you how not good I am at it. Um, can you play Smoke on the Water? <laughs> money for one looper or wall looper pedal any day of the week get a looper 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 everybody's saying looper yes 100 percent um listen to kirk hammond if you want to hear the wall indeed i love kirk but he kind of overuses that wall a little in my opinion uh do i need to go through the blues phase to get to the next level are there other ways uh no don't if you don't like blues don't don't do it otherwise the blues phase. No, you don't have to do it, but it's a great way to understand phrasing and that sort of thing. I think blues is great for that, you know. Um, great. Which side? I'm in Italy. I see you, Antonio. I know where you're from, my friend. Uh, what do you think of string joy strings? Never tried them, William. If they send some to me, I'll try them out. Should I always just play with people who are better than me? Fantastic question, Jeff. Jeff for the win. Um, here's the deal. If you play, it's good to play with both. If you have somebody who's not as good as you, and obviously that's all a matter of opinion, if you have, if you have somebody who's not as good as you, then you teaching them will actually help you to know stuff better. Did you know that? That's what they do in Alcoholics Anonymous and a lot of other programs like that. When you have somebody who you're mentoring, now you're now they're looking up to you. And if you fail, well, now you're not just failing yourself, you're failing this guy too. And there's something about that teaching that really makes you learn stuff in a way. So having somebody who you're teaching is great. Having somebody who's teaching you is fantastic. Have both. So not, not always, but it's a good thing. And obviously the people who are great, you're gonna be gleaning stuff from. You're gonna be, they're gonna be raining great stuff down on you. You're gonna be raining stuff, great stuff down on the other guy. So um, good to do both, but yes, get with some people that are better with, better than you, it's fantastic. Yes, there was a question that I forgot to ask first time questions. Why is it called the C chord and, and are there any more of this kind? Larry, it sounds like you need to know the basics for sure. It's called a C chord because it has a C in the bass, but some of this stuff's not gonna make sense to you. If I'm talking to anybody right now, I don't care if you're on YouTube, Facebook, doesn't matter. If you hear me right now and this stuff's confusing you, it's because you don't have some of these basics down. Now, it doesn't mean that one of these things might've confused you, then that doesn't mean that you don't have the basics down, but if everything I'm saying to you is like over your head, you've got to get the basics. You have to. Otherwise, why are you spending all this time watching me? You know what I mean? Unless I'm that entertaining, which I, my wife says I'm not. So it, it can't be that. So if you want to get good at guitar, you got to commit at least to the basics. Okay? Listen, folks, 200 bucks off of this thing today, 68 hours of instruction. Visit me here in Nashville. That would cost 6,800 bucks. It's a lot of money, but 200 bucks today for the whole system, and we, we constantly load new stuff in there all the time. If you're like, Eric, I can't afford anything. I have anti-money. Then at least get into the free system, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. At least start there, watch these, and get a good knowledge, a good roundabout knowledge of the, um, of the guitar, of the fretboard, all, okay? But yes, here's a C chord. Here's a C chord. Here's one. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. We can keep doing this. Uh, they're all over the fretboard. If you wanna know how to do what I just did there, if you're inside UGS, just type in caged, C-A-G-E-D. I have a massive series of that in there. If you're on YouTube, type in your guitar stage caged and I'll show you how to do this, okay? Great, 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 great. Uh, solo help. When to jump outside of the pentatonic to express your idea? What notes help? Uh, that's a fairly big question. Uh, when to jump outside the pentatonic? When it gets boring in the in the place that you're at. So I'm a big fan of you know I work a little area and I'm like okay I'm pulling this lick out. There's that lick. There's this lick. There's this thing. Oh cool something new. Um, okay that's wearing out. Then I move to another position or I do something different. I'm just always trying to change it up so it's not getting boring. So that's how I think about you know changing uh, pentatonics and all this stuff. Man my butt's hurting. You guys get to get up and stand up. 
I'm, I'm in pain over here. I'm, I'm a little achy. Uh, what notes help? So, you know, preferably the notes that are in the chord that you're that are playing behind you, but you but the notes in the scales is a great place to start. Can you start uh, can you demonstrate the cage system starting with an E? Yeah, so remember cage C A G E D is using all the shapes of those open chords C A G E and D. So we start with an E. We're starting with not only the chord but with the E shape, okay? So we go so we go right down the progression. So if it started with a C, We'd go C form, A form, G form, E form, D form. Oh, I can feel lights going on there just now. Other folks are like, Whew. But here, we're starting on an E form. It happens to be the chord as well, but it's an E form. Then we start at the E and we go D. It's the next letter in caged and then C, A, G at the beginning. So we have E, we got D, we got C, we got A, we got G. We got E again. We got D, and we keep going up. Good, good, good questions. Good questions. Is there a guitar phase when you are rebellious <laughs> against your parents? Uh, I think so. I just think it goes hand in hand for some reason. Parents don't like when they, you're playing guitar and stuff like that. Uh, always with me, always with you. Oh, I love that song. Can I play that song? No, I, I learned it at one time, but I've learned so many songs that my repertoire is is so big that I that it's not my repertoire anymore. I forget the songs, but I love that tune. By um, very influential album to for me, Joe Satriani. Check that song out. Always with me, always with you, my friends. Great song. Uh, I learned to play some Megadeth and upset the parents. Indeed. Uh, Internet is slow here, so I was sticking to YouTube. I had posted a question on how to make your guitar sing and weep. Yeah, I definitely don't answer. I'm not answering the questions on YouTube right now because I'm only looking at one screen. So I'm over. Anybody who's watching me on YouTube or Facebook, yourguitarstage.com slash live. Um, how do you make your guitar sing or weep? Well, you know, a, a lot of that has to do with tone and it has to do with bending. Okay, bending notes. So, um... Let's see, I got this thing going. Well, that's a terrible tone. There we go. Gotta change that up. Hold on. idea right <laughs> so um, the whole point is is that your tone you have a lot of overdrive going on that sort of thing that's what's gonna get you that's what's gonna get you that sound okay um, okay I'm answering questions from about six minutes ago by the way uh, will overdrive pedals be okay blues uh, with boss blues pedal yeah it should sound pretty good you got to do your tweaking though I'm 57 years old does age matter in playing out? No, absolutely not. Does not matter. Age is, age is not anything. Um, Eric, can you please demonstrate movable chords? Alteco is saying. Uh, watch my video on the caged system. C A G E D. All chords are movable. Every chord can be moved. Here's an E major. Walk it up to the fretboard. Also, watch my videos on inside the system, Unstoppable Guitar System. Also watch it on YouTube. Bar chords. Those are, all, every chord is movable, every scale is movable. They are all movable. What would you say uh, is the key to choosing which mode to play if you know the key signature? That is, um, here's the deal, Hobo Daddy. You ask that question in such a way that I don't think I don't think that word means what you think it means. Um, mode. Um, 
So modal playing basically has to do with playing on top of a chord. So the key signature is, is, doesn't really, I mean, it matters, but it doesn't matter. Everything's in a key signature. So knowing the key signature is only a very small part of the, equa the equation, if that, matter, if that means anything. Uh, Eric, can you please recognize Jeff Lake? Yes, hi, Jeff Lake. How are you doing, buddy? Jeff, how are you doing? Um, Okay, has the whole show Jamie Nays. He has the whole show Jamie Nays. Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't think, Jeff, I think everybody's upset about the caps lock, but it's okay, guys. It's it, The caps lock is okay. Um, Jamie, if you can change your caps to lower caps, please do that. Um, it, it is a little bit, I guess, in, in internet land, it's known as screaming, so maybe, maybe change that. Um, Okay, uh, he gave Kirk lessons. Yes, he did. Uh, Joe Satriani did, indeed. Tube Screamer, great one. What was your first proper guitar, and why did you buy it in preference to other guitar brands? The, the first proper guitar that I had was a PV Razor. It was $275 or $250. I got it for Christmas. I posted a picture the other day. Uh, I think it was 1983 or 84 was that first guitar, and I got it because of the shape, and the shape was ridiculous. It looked like the, it was the, it's the ugliest guitar that's been made in the history of guitars, but my goodness, I thought it was so cool in 1983. Imagine that. Imagine us looking back at that year and saying that was weird. Yep. Yep. Carl's saying, gotta hand it to Eric for saying for so long, give him an attaboy award. Thanks. No, I love this. Uh, it's so fun. Last time we stayed on for, for, we were on for three and a half hours. What are we today? We're coming up to the three hour mark. Maybe we'll try to beat that today. Maybe we'll do three and a half hours. We'll go, we'll go to like 2.30 today or something. We'll see. Hey, you know, honestly, if folks are hanging in there, we'll, we're going we're gonna to learn. But I mean, I'm, I am getting hungry. I'm hungry. Um, okay, folks on YouTube, folks on Facebook, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live if you want me to answer your question because you could be posting that question a hundred times on YouTube. I won't see it. There's a whole nother chat roll at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Did you hear that? Head on over there and I can answer your questions then. Okay, also, you're gonna notice on the right-hand side, you're gonna see a big yellow button. We're giving $200 to you today. Literally $200 handing it to you for the Unstoppable Guitar System. Normally a $400 course, it's $200 today. We're gonna to keep this open until Wednesday and we're closing the doors, literally. And when we say that, that's not the pitch, that's, we're really doing that. We don't keep it at that. It's normally 400 bucks, it's a sale. So you're, you're getting a steal today by doing that. And by the way, it's 68 hours of guitar lessons inside that course and it's growing every day, okay? So check it out, check it out, man. Yes, yes. Tube screamers are awesome. Um, okay. Do you ever find yourself using techniques from styles other than the one you're currently playing? Example, throw in a few jazz chords in a pop song or classical techniques in a rock solo. Great question, Eddie. Yeah, and I do it all the time. I mean, obviously in blue, in rock, I mean, this is reggae. This is reggae right here, right? But, but I'm playing blues. So yeah, I do that all the time. And different different bits and pieces. It's fun to do that. It's watch people's faces in the crowd to do something different like that. Um, but it should fit either way. Erica, I play chords. I have a real struggle with muting the E string in the pad of the base of my finger. Any good exercises for that? I think it's my thumb placement. Yeah, um, exercises one, two, and three, or better yet, actually doing what it is that you're trying to do. So practicing that chord and being very cognizant of what's happening with your hand, fix it. Practice the fixing of it. A lot of times people want an exercise to do, to fix the one thing that they're having a problem with, but if you work on the one thing you're having a problem with, you're gonna get there so much quicker, so much quicker. Do that, okay? And it probably is your thumb placement. Yeah, so like at the beginning of this broadcast, that was the first thing we talked about. Watch the beginning part starting at about the 10 minute mark. Um, 
starting at the 15 minute mark. That's where I start talking about that basic fretting. And then at about the 23 minute mark of uh, 22, something like that, I talk about cording. Really important that you understand both of the uh, both of those bits and the techniques that I cover in those. I'm just learning, bought a Taylor Mini GS. I have one of those and they're great. Uh, came with elixirs. Should I change them to easier strings? Um, I don't know what you mean by easier, but elixirs are really good strings and they last a long time because they have a little bit of a coating on them. I don't like when the coating comes off, but it usually doesn't change the, the sound of the strings anyhow. Um, Glenn is saying, Eric, how can I use the capo to play along with other guitarists to add more variety? Uh, Glenn, download the PDF that's at yourguitarstage.com slash live. It's over to um, the right, I believe, of... No, it's above this chat roll right now that you're, that you're writing in. It's above that. And read the section on capos. Because I basically show you and I give you a matrix on how to do this. But basically, if, you're, you know, if someone's playing in the key of C... <laughs> the feel of C, then you could come up here and play the G, the feel of G. Right? And then we got... You know, that sort of thing. So you want to be able to know how to do this pretty quickly, and you can do this by using that matrix that I have inside that PDF. Okay? Great. Great question. And that's how you add more variety, you know? Uh, also, the cage system plays along with that really nicely. So study the cage system. If you're in UGS already, um, just look there, because I have lots of stuff for you on that. And if you don't, um, look on YouTube, type in your guitar stage caged. Uh, like your answer on age, as I'm 65, not too late then, ha ha. Absolutely, Robert. It's, I mean, in fact, retirement age, it's like you have some time to focus. You've been through life. Uh, much of much of like learning about like you've gone through the stuff the, the bull crap right and you're you're you've got the wherewithal uh the teenagers are like ah, i gotta learn now you know and it's like you got typically have more patience and what have you so it's a great time to learn it's, it's some of the best times to learn um that's so, so many people come to the, the guitar i have folks in their 80s Maybe in their 90s, I don't know, but I definitely know I have folks in their 80s inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Not one or two, but like several, because I talk to them often. Hey Eric from the UK, would you recommend uh, as a basic pedal setup? I usually practice on my acoustic, but would like to get into electric more. Uh, John, I could answer this question in a lot more detail on something that I've done already. Uh, go to YouTube and type in Your Guitar Sage Pedals. And I've got lots of, lots of, uh, several videos. But right now, let's go over to the pedal cam real, real quick, and I'll show you two that I would recommend right off the bat. Um, number one, this guy right here, this Line 6 M5. Get this. Buy it. Don't ask any questions. Go buy it. It's like 120 bucks, and it has 100 and something effects in it. More effects than you'll ever need to have. You'll never get through them all. I have, but it took a couple days. Um, get that. And then get this guy, whoops, and then get this guy right here. The Ditto pedal, um, TC Electronic, or some sort of looper pedal. Great for vamping and playing along with things that you've done. That's what, what I did here when I said... That's the looper pedal. Because you can record something in it. Pretty cool, right? Good, good, good. Great questions. Great questions. Have I given uh, For the Love of God by, Tim, by Steve Vai a shot? No, I have not, but he's an amazing player. Love him. I'm a beginner and have played notes and chords and have been trying to play songs in both, but some scales, songs scale two octaves. How can I play a song like Happy Birthday with scales two octaves? I answered that one already, Ron. Uh, you use the same chords. The, the notes don't matter. An A is an A and it's an A. This is an E. Watch this. E, here's an A. A, 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 it all works, okay? So it doesn't matter. Maybe a silly question, but how do you relax your fretting hand? Mine tends to cramp up and get sore. You play. The more you play, the stronger your hand will get and the better your technique will get, and you won't cramp up as much. So it's just you're getting used to going to the gym and going, oh, man, well, why would I go to the gym? My muscles hurt. It's because you're doing the job. You're, if you came back from the gym and your muscles didn't hurt, you didn't do the right job. Got to burn your muscles, right? So if your hands 
cramping, then great, that's great. Celebrate because you're doing the right thing. Uh, just do it more and take take breaks, but it will it will definitely get better, you know. Jamie says, get to the phone and order a pizza, Jason, because Eric's hungry. I am very hungry. Oh, that sounds good. But I'm not eating. I definitely don't eat cheese. That was that used to be one of my favorites, but I don't eat that anymore, and I don't eat. I'm not eating bread much right now these days either. I know some people are going, why would you do that? I don't know. I'm a beginner and have played. Okay, we've been over that. Been over that one. Jeff with the caps locked. Uh, <laughs> I'm a beginner and have played. Oh, geez, Ron with the question there. Um, do you recommend using a metronome when practicing? pick hand speed and alternate picking what about while practicing scale or lead um clay if you can do the licks and you can practice the scales and everything without the metronome then 100 percent use a metronome but if you're still struggling with getting it again think about the juggler throwing another ball in the mix is not gonna make it easier it'll make it harder but if you're fine with it yes a metronome is going to make you play faster because it's going to make you play more accurately and more in time so you're going to be more skilled and it just 100 percent will make you a faster player for sure do it do it. Do I teach classical guitar? Um, I have personally one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't do lessons for it because it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother bag. And I believe it, it deserves the respect. Uh, it, it, it should get the respect it deserves. And so even though I was a classical major for three years in college and that was my first love, you have to really keep up with it. And I do more blues and rock and stuff these days. So that's what I do. Uh, Eric, I've been practicing going back and forth between the major and minor pentatonic. Is there a specific point in the chord progression when doing this sounds best? Um, is there a specific point? Uh, when you know both of them well. So again, learn the one really well. Then go to the other one and learn that really well before you mix the two. That's, when, that's the, the point when you're going to get good because then it's just a matter of switching back and forth in your mind. Okay. Yes, we did announce the winners. How old am I? I am 48. I had to think. I find I use a capo so that I can reach some of the chords better. Is that okay to do or bad habit? No, that's great. In fact, I tell people use the capo at first because it presses the strings down a little bit more. So beginners, that's a, I never mentioned that one. I rarely do. I've mentioned it before, but it will press the strings down to make fretting easier so a lot of times with beginners especially when they're trying to play bar chords they say go to the fifth fret or the seventh fret put that capo on it mashes the strings massively down makes it a lot easier to play your bar chords boom that's a that's a big one right that's a that's a hack great hack right there i recently discovered i can use the pentatonic position one over the one chord four over four and five three and position three over the five it sounds great to me am i wrong no you can use any position over any chord it doesn't, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Uh, but what's probably happening is you're playing, you're outlining the the scale or the chord a little bit better with these different forms that you're talking about. So no, you're, you know, definitely not wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I teach finger picking? Yeah, I have a whole series inside the Unstoppable Guitar System um, on finger picking. Besides bar chords, what are a few of your favorite chords further up the neck than the open chords? Do I have a few chords of favorite? Besides the bar chords, what are your favorite, what are a few of your favorite other chords further up the neck than the open chords? Well, open chords are the only ones that are down here. The rest of them are bar chords. Uh, other, I could say that the, the next one is uh, maybe, that's not really a bar chord, but you could play it up the neck is the diminished chord. <laughs> I don't know, I love that chord, diminished chord, one of my favorite. I have two ditto looper pedals on there. If you wanna know more about that, Jeff, uh, YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage Pedal Board Tour, I think it is, okay? Um, and I talk about why I do that. One at the beginning, one at the, one at the front. How does the switcher pedal work? Um, let's go over to the pedal cam real quick. So basically the way a looper, way a looper were, or a, you know, you know, a switcher, it's called a switcher. Um, basically, all these pedals are on at all times. And they're looped into here. So now, basically, when I come and I press 
these first two pedals, I'm taking every single pedal out of the mix, except for this one. I keep this one in because it's just, I use it as a noise gate. So I'm taking every single pedal out. That's what this does, is it physically takes them out of, of the context, out of the line from my guitar to my amp. So right now, if I play this, I'm not going through anything other than this one pedal, and it's hitting the amp. If I go here, I'm adding this one pedal, and I've got this here. If I add this, now I'm adding a, this pedal on top of it. If I do this, then I'm adding this pedal also. So I can stack things up and, and situate it in such a way that, um, that allows me to give only the pedals that I want and leave out the pedals that I don't want. That makes for a nice clean sound, electronically that is. Uh, great, it's a great question. After three years of playing, my thumb still pains while playing bar chords, and I can't even play a two, two minor on bar chord. Uh, I don't care if you've been playing for 30 years. If you're not playing consistently, it doesn't count. Like, I could have started 30 years ago, played one day, and then picked up the guitar today, and I've been playing for 30 years. But if you're not playing every day, you're going to have pain. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could have some mm, medical malfunction with your body, but chances are it's not. Chances are it's just fatigue because you're not doing it all the time. If I go to the gym today and then I go to the gym in two weeks from now, I'm gonna hurt every day for the rest of my life if it's every two weeks uh, because the muscles are growing back and then they're getting relaxed again and then you're not hitting them all the time. Gotta hit them all the time. Um, how do you play the A shape down the neck as a bar chord? It's easy, um, really, you know, here's the A. Right? And basically, you're going to put your first finger on that first fret there, and you're going to bar strings two, three, and four. And that's it. The four middle strings. If you want to get that fifth string on the top here, you have to really hyperextend that finger. Can't even do it right now. Yep. Most people don't play that high note there. It's a, it's a booger to get. Good, good questions. Uh, would the cage system be the cage system if people had six fingers? Uh, would the cage system be the C-A-G-E-B-D if... Uh, no, it would not. I don't know if that's a joke or if that's for real, but no, it wouldn't. It'd still be the cage system. It has nothing to do with fingers. Can you move an open chord to change the octave? Ron, the way you're asking those questions, I'm either thinking that, that it's, there's something about the way that you're asking your, your questions where they just don't, that are, they're not making sense. Um, can you move an open chord to change the octave? I can take an open chord and I can play it up here. That's an octave up. Does a beginner need all those pedals? No, absolutely not. Uh, no, you don't. I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to do, but no, no one needs all those pedals. You don't. Don't need him. I've um, been playing for a few years and I just feel stuck. What should I practice to get better, faster? Brian, uh, you know, go after what it is that you desire. You know, if you want to learn songs, rock songs, then learn rock songs. If you want to learn jazz, learn jazz. But I always tell people to, to play songs, okay? Play songs, play songs, play songs. I have smaller fingertips and I have a disadvantage from men's larger finger pads. Also, uh, also my smaller hands. No, Jane. Not at all. You're not, you're not at all uh, limited. On YouTube, type in your guitar stage hands. I have a video that will address that specifically, and it will encourage you, not just encourage you, but it'll show you that no, it has nothing to do with your hand size. Um, trust me, it has nothing to do with your hand size. I've seen, I've seen uh, kindergartners play on full-size classical guitars, which have a much wider neck than, than, than an electric, or an acoustic for that matter, and a standard acoustic, dreadnought, and and they're not having a problem at all. You could say it's because they're Korean or because they, whatever, but it has nothing, to, it has to do that they've practiced in such a way, if that makes sense. Um, okay, good. Number one inspiration for you that kept you driven. I, I think for me, the number one inspiration was girls. Uh, get, no, I'm joking. It was, uh, that's not a bad, it's not a bad inspiration, but no, my mind has always been melody and, and 
guitar players that were just doing things that I was like, God, that's absolutely amazing. I want to do that. I want to be that, you know? Um, it's always another guitar player or song or something like that that's always done it for me. 68 years old here, wonderful. See, I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe how many folks, 60s, 70s, 80s, 66, Walter, or Michael, nice, love it. Hey Eric, uh, what is the Hendrix chord? Is it an A sharp seven major at the fifth fret? No, what they people call the Hendrix chord is, right, from, um, This right here is the Hendrix chord. And effectively, so this is this is why theory is absolutely so mind-numbingly powerful because Someone says, well, what chord is that? I don't know, no one ever taught it to me. Well, I don't need to be taught a chord to know what chord it is, I just need to do the math. It's simple, if you learn the math. This is one. This is a whole nother uh, module that I teach inside of the Unstop. My butt is starting to hurt. Oh man, I shake it out. Um, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, I have a whole bit where I'm teaching how to understand chords, the music theory part of it, so that you can build all these chords, right? And so this chord right here, I can tell you right off the bat, it's some sort of E7 chord, but then I need to know what that is, that note is. Think about a chord is basically like ingredients in a recipe. You know, if you have certain in ingredients, it's going to make a soup, a certain type of soup or a certain recipe. So in this case here, we've got this note, which is an E. We've got this note, which is the, 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 uh, the third, right? of the chords, that makes it major, right? It's a major chord. We've got this note right here, which is the flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flat it. So we got, so now we know it's a E major, right? But we're gonna, but we don't call it E major, we just call it an E seven chord, so we got an E seven. And we got this note here. So we take their, our scale, our, our E major scale, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so that's a nine, this would be a sharp nine. So this chord is called an E sharp nine. Some people might call it an E seven sharp nine, uh, but that's an E, E seven sharp nine. So um, if you played it down a half step, if you played it at the fifth fret, then it would be a D uh, seven sharp nine. What about a looper for a beginner? Yeah, get one for sure. Get one. All right. How many guitars do I have? Do I have um, today? I have one less. This one's going away. But just right here in the studio, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then I've got another studio right across. That's where Chris is at, and I probably have six hanging on the wall there. And I got another studio upstairs that I have maybe eight, another eight, and then a few other rooms in the house where I have just a guitar just hanging out, just because I like to have them where I can do stuff all the time. <laughs> I like to just pick them up. Uh, I'm a damn good drummer, but an axe man wannabe. I have a strat, da 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 da, figuring I won't need all the pedals and crap. Is my thinking stinking? No, not at all. Uh, no, you know, you, you need what you need. Don't worry about what you need if you don't have a desire for it, you know what I mean? But if you go to pick up your guitar and you're like, why does my guitar sound so clean? And you're sitting there trying to play, trying to play, playing, trying to play Metallica, you know? And you're like, why does it sound like that? It sounds terrible. Because you need some overdrive. Even that doesn't sound good because it's on a Strat. I would need my, my humbucker picker pickups but you you get 
you buy something when you need it, just stay in that mind frame. You won't get distracted with um, with gear, with gear acquisition acquisition syndrome gas, right? Um, okay, good, good. Cage does not include the B major chord. Uh, that's why I asked. Cage only includes six of the seven major chords. Well, no, there's 12 major chords, right? There's sharp chords and flat chords. So, I mean, we have E major, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. You know, we could go on. So we have 12 of those. But uh, the B is not included because it's not an open chord. C is an open chord. G is an open chord. A is an open chord, E is an open chord, D is an open chord. So that's the five chords that we're, that we're deriving uh, that from, the cage system from. And basically what we're saying is each one of those five shapes can be moved up the neck. Obviously any chord can be moved up the neck, right? But what this does is it tells us the order that these chords are in. C form, A form, G form, E form, D form, right? There's no B form because there's no open B chord. We could play a B chord. There's a B, there's a B, but we're still playing an A shape and an E shape. So based off of the easy, um, the easy open chords. Do I know any Neil Young? I feel like I've taught some Neil Young, but I didn't, um, I didn't grow up listening to him a lot, so I don't really gravitate a ton to him, but I think he's cool. I think he did some really cool stuff. Eric deserves an Iron Butt Award. I do, but it hurt. I need to get up. I tell you what I need is I need a, a pad had to sit on, like at the football games. All right, great. look at you guys hanging in here. Two hours and 20, this is about where we ended it last time, so let's not do that. Let's keep going, shall we? Folks, we're, we're, uh, we're gonna keep going here, but YouTubers, if you're at YouTube still, look, we got 216 people still in the chat. It used to be that that was, uh, that was when it was full blast. Now, this is that, you know, two, three hours and 20 minutes later, uh, we still have 216 people just over here inside of the chat, okay? And then over on YouTube, we got 303 people. And on Facebook, we got 10 people. So we got a lot of people still here. Listen, if you have not gotten your question answered yet, you hear me? If you haven't got your question answered yet, it's because you're not in the right place. Yourguitarsage.com slash live. You're going to see a chat roll going there. That's where I'm answering questions. Do that. Also, over to the right of that, you're going to see that little yellow button. Click that yellow button if you want $200 off of the Unstoppable Guitar System today. For folks that have just joined us recently, 68 hours of guitar lessons. I teach for an, uh, for 100 bucks an hour here at the house. So, um, do the math. 100 times 68 is basically what you're getting. $1,600 worth of guitar lessons. I wouldn't teach them any differently if you were sitting right in front of me, except you'd be able to ask me questions. So that's the one thing that the Unstoppable Guitar System also does is because I answer these questions every day. So it's as if you're sitting there with me and you say, hey, what about this? And I say, hey, here's the answer. It's cool like that. And we got nearly 600 jam tracks in there. New material going up every single month. And um, what else? Live broadcasts with, with not as many people. In the, uh, in the bit here. I need a butt pillow, that's true. Do you play your Gibson J200 more with a pick or more often finger style with that one? I usually do it more finger style to be quite honest with you, but uh, still, not. I don't use it. Uh, um, I do both. I need to do butt dexterity, sitting butt dexterity exercises indeed. Do I teach Hawaiian music or Hawaiian styles? I don't, but I love it. How does a classic Vibe 50 Strat compare to a Fender's MIM? Uh, you know, the classic vibe of 50s is, 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 has, it's basically built as if it was made in the 50s. So like, uh, I think they call it some sort of C neck. I forgot what kind, but it's like a mid, they, they, they do something to the neck that's different. But it's basically built like the guitars in the 50s. That's all, that's it. Great questions. Great questions. Um, can you demonstrate mixing a pentatonic shape with a mode, with a mode in improv, say F Lydian over an F chord? Well, how about this? I've got this chord progression in here. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do two, I'll do three things. I'll play blues, I'll play pentatonic, I'll play blues, I'll play minor, and then I'll play Dorian. And you're going to hear differences between all these, okay? So here we go. So... 
So the first thing I'm starting off with is pentatonic only. That's pentatonic. Blues is, I'm adding that blue note. Pentatonic. Here is minor. So here would be Dorian. So you can hear it. Like to me, I don't love that sound. I to me, it's, it's just. Plain old sounds wrong, but uh, you know it's it's another sound, and my my ears don't gravitate towards modal type playing. I can do it, but I don't I don't love it. Uh, it's just not my thing, you know. Um, okay, okay. So, um, do you play all those guitars you have around in your house? I do. I play them all, you know. Um, oh, Suicide is Painless. Uh, I'm a beginner. My husband loves MASH. I want to play it for him. Thanks, Eric. You rock. You know, I used to play that song. And I love, absolutely love that song. That MASH theme was amazing. It's called Suicide is Painless, uh, which is probably not true. But um, MASH, the, 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 the show MASH had started that, um, that beautiful theme. And the song is just beautiful. And I used to play that. Yeah, I had a chord. You, you know, you could look on ultimate-guitar.com and see if they have, or just type in Google, Suicide is Painless chart, uh, and you'll probably find it. You and your crew are amazing, Dave is saying. Yes, indeed. Chris is amazing. Jason's amazing. I've got, uh, I mean, I've got folks doing my videos for me. Uh, I've got an amazing crew, and there's absolutely no way I could do this by myself. Zero. I mean, I just couldn't do it. I, I used to do it by myself, but it was a much smaller uh, dealio. And um, I need a stool with a motorcycle seat. That is true. But yes, so Chris, thank you so much. Jason, thank you so much. It's true. My crew is the best. I love them. Uh, what's the difference between finger picking and classical guitar? Is Blackbird con considered finger picking? Yes, it is. What's the difference between finger picking and classical guitar? So. <laughs> I forgot how it goes. Anyhow, you got the idea there. Um, what's the difference between classical 
finger picking and classical guitar. Classical guitar is a type of guitar, nylon string. Um, it is approached a different way, like you typically put the guitar on this leg and um, you never have your thumb over the top of the neck. No, 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 not ever. Um, and you just play it, you approach it a little bit differently. Nylon strings, finger picking for sure, but you can finger pick steel string and here I am finger picking an electric, you know, so. Um, Jeff, when it says uh, seats in here, what does that mean? And did it get up to 500 now seats? I mean, uh, it's, it's how many people can be in the chat room, Jeff. And we have a lot of people, uh, 221 people in there right now. Um, Eric, some people need to know they have to have a chat roll account. They don't have to have a chat roll account. They just need to have Twitter or Facebook or chat roll. They can, they can do any. So most people have either Twitter or or, or Facebook, and if not, you can always get in with a chat roll account. What do you do when your creativity hits a roadblock? What's the strategy to break out of deadlock? Uh, I like to be inspired by another song. If I'm inspired by another song, then that is always what's going to help me get something, you know, get more out of me because I'm like, well, I should have done that. There's my heart. There's my soul. It's right there. Somebody else wrote that. It makes me go, ah, do it. You know, that's that's what I love. How much is uh, how much of the course is for acoustic guitar? The whole thing can be done really on an acoustic guitar. I mean, uh, it could be done on acoustic, it could be done on electric. It's all tuned the same way. So, uh, but gosh, if you're just saying, I mean, I mean, it's, it can all be done on on acoustic. It can all be done on electric. So it's all for that. You know. Neil Young was raised about 60 miles north of me in a town called Omi, and yes, in Canada and Nashville. I want to visit, so uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, indeed. Uh, is UGS a good course for someone learning classical as well as blues, country, etc.? Uh, I would say no. If you're learning classical, learn strictly from, if you're really wanting to be a great classical guitar player, don't buy the Unstoppable Guitar System. Don't do it. Take from a, a, a guy or a girl who really knows classical guitar and really get, because it's a whole nother mindset. You're reading music all the time. You're not reading charts. You're not improvising. You're reading music. It's a real specific way of doing things. Um, so, uh, no. If you're learning classical guitar, um, I mean, I definitely teach techniques in there. I definitely uh, am a classical player. and was that in college for three years. But uh, again, uh, my emphasis in Un Unstoppable is, is, is not so much classical. I love classical, though. I'm at near the bottom of my learning. Where do I get all the explanations? Diminished, augmented, seventh, fifth, sustained, pentatonic. The words I hear all don't really have any meaning yet. Why uh, And why can't I play chords cleanly? I have always have buzzing. Would, you, would your course help a newbie? Tom, 100% it would help a newbie. It would help intermediate and advanced players, but it starts at the beginning. It starts, there's a beginning section that you go step by step, teaches you how to make the chords not buzz the whole nine yards. It's all about fretting. It's all about understanding how to play those chords. That's covered in the beginning section. Diminished, augmented, seventh, sus uh, uh, sustained, it's actually suspended chord. Uh, pentatonic, all that stuff is covered in the intermediate and advanced section. It's all step by step. You can't not mess up. I mean, you just can't. Um, there's a whole reason why this thing is, I mean, on Udemy, uh, I have a mini, a miniature version of this course, and uh, and it's a lot smaller, trust me. Uh, but that's the number one, uh, the number one guitar course there is out there. And there's a reason for that. I mean, we have, that course is in 191 countries, and 80, over 83,000 people are in that course. It's huge. Um, Unstoppable Guitar System is in regards to what I teach in there, is at least twice the size of that, at least. Okay, so that's where that so much of the of of the good stuff is, and we're doing it at two hundred dollars off today, friends. If you don't know what I'm talking about, those folks are on Facebook and YouTube. Um, go to yourguitarsage.com/live. We're literally slashing the price in half today. It'll be good until Wednesday. We're closing the door on Wednesdays. I ain't fooling you. That's what we're doing. Um, so you have $200 off today. That's 36 cents a lesson. S over 68 hours. 68 hours of guitar lessons in there. So they're not one hour a piece. Some of them are five minutes. Some of them are 20 minutes. It just depends on what I'm teaching. And everything is in order. Tom, in order for you to know diminished, augmented, and all that stuff, you have to learn the basics first of theory. I teach that all that. This whole system is meant for you to come in having never ever played guitar, 
walk in with your guitar, turn on video one, and take it at whatever speed you want. It's lifetime membership, so you're in there for whenever you want um, until you're completely satisfied. And I keep uploading videos in there, so you're never going to be satisfied. You're, you're never going to. You're always going to have stuff to learn. Um, so yes, 100%. It's going to bring you from the very baby beginner all the way up to to pro plan. I talk about all sorts of pro stuff in there in the advanced section. And here's the deal. If you don't like it, if it's too much information, if I'm teaching you too quickly, if you're getting too good, you can just email me and say, Eric, I want out. I can't believe it. I play like Stevie Ray Vaughan and I'm just pissed off about it. And I'll give you 100% of your money back. Seriously, not joking. Effing F chord. I follow your four, four step program to learn the F chord properly, but I still struggle at step three, five strings form. Uh, First, I still mute a string with my ring finger. Can what can I do to play that form cleanly? Great, detailed question. Thank you. So, if you watch the effing F chords, the way that I teach the the bar chords, is you learn two notes at a time, then three notes, then four notes. Because if you know, if you do this, you're going to know exactly where the problem is. And so, I choreo. What you want to do is with your, you want to go back to your four string chords. Don't play the three strings because you're beyond that. Now just do the four string forms and get really, 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 really good at that. Make sure you can do it every single time. Then when you go to your fifth string chords, your five string chords, it's going to be easier. But what you can do is you just simply look at your hand and say, what part of the fretboard is the problem? Is your thumb dropped behind the neck? Are you doing all the proper techniques that I've, sp that I've talked to you about on top of the fingertips, right behind the fret, thumb back behind the neck. If you're doing all that and you need a little extra pressure on something, then do that. But here's something else you can do, Accordio, is you can take the capo, put it at the fifth fret, and do the same form because that because that uh, capo is pressing down. It's going to help you to be able to do it easier. It's also going to give you the wherewithal to go, oh, wow, I just did it. I can do this. And then eventually you work it down with the capo, and then you take the capo off. It makes it a little bit harder, and then bingo, bango, you're there. But you'll see that progression. You know, does that make sense? Okay, man, great. Man, killer questions. Killer, killer, killer questions. I love it. I love it. All right. Man. You guys are flying with this chat roll. How many questions have I answered today, right? Um, okay, I'm taking it all the way to the end here because um, I'm, I'm missing a few, but I, I can't keep up with them all. I've been learning the bar chords. Can you suggest a simple song I could use them in? Ron, uh, on YouTube, I have tons of songs, and every now and then I throw a bar chord in there, but no, specifically, I can't tell you off the top of my head, a specific song with bar chords. Uh, many of them have just one bar chord, and that's the place I'd start. But start with songs that you like. So go to YouTube, type in Your Guitar Sage Elvis, or Your Guitar Sage uh, Red Hot, or Your Guitar Sage uh, whatever band you're looking for. Start there. Start with what you like, you know. What is your take on Indian classical music? I think it's pretty darn cool. Um, I love Indian music. I, I don't play it, but I, but I love it, you know. Okay, good. What is your, okay, yeah, what's your take on that? Okay, yep, 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 backing up just a little bit. And friends, I think we're probably going to go another five minutes-ish, and then we're probably going to call it a day because I'm getting hella hungry over here. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Okay. Good, good questions. Good. How does a 5-watt tube amp like a Vox ACTV suit at home bedroom practice. Is it too loud to crank? Five watts, five tube watts is loud. It's loud. This is 18 watts, I think. 12 or 18. I, for, I always forget. I'm not very good with gear. I forget stuff all the time. I just, to me, it's all about playing and uh, I don't have enough time to remember all this other stuff, right? Uh, that's the way my brain's wired. My wife loves that about me, by the way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that's a 12 watt amp right there, and it's it's loud. Five watts is very loud. I bought a five watt, uh, what they call a lunchbox amp, like that Vox, and I had it next to a hundred watt solid state amp, not this one, but another one. And my goodness gracious, the the sound was was equally as loud. A five watt tube amp to a hundred watt um, other one. Okay. 
Um, okay, Mitch, uh, signed up over an hour and a half ago. No email with log on info. Mitch, if you put your info in there correctly, uh, it's, it's automatic. It gets sent to you automatically. Check your spam. Make sure that you put the right thing in there. But here's the deal. If you have a problem logging in for some reason, um, email right now. Email support at yourguitarsage.com. Email them and get them set up. Uh, conversely, Jason may be able to help you out there if you let him know your email address, okay? Um, but we can we can get you we can get you set up, okay? But um, most of the time when that happens, it means someone fat fingered their email address, and we sent the email to the email that was put in, uh, and so hopefully that didn't happen. But that that can happen. All other place to check is your is your um, is your spam. How would you take influence from jazz music and incorporate it into hard rock or heavy metal? Or metal, um, you know, with jazz music, you're talking talking about playing uh, a lot of modes and that sort of thing. So you could do that with with that metal type sound, but just do that with jazz modes and play more jazz mo jazz progressions, and you're going to get that sound that you're that you're talking about there. Um, great question. Okay, while well, playing the F chord progression and soloing in A minor pentatonic, how do I change to another scale, find the root? Uh, Caesar, you know, you don't want to necessarily change to another scale. If you're in A minor, you're in A minor. Um, if you want to go from A minor pentatonic to A minor, then you just need to know the form. You need to know that scale. Uh, I teach all that stuff inside the system. Um, you know, pentatonic, uh, blues, minor, whatever it is, the ones that work together with a specific chord progression, you need to know those forms, and then you just switch, you just switch gears. Once you know the form so well, you, you'll just be able to, to just jump up and, and do it, you know? Okay, great, great question. Okay, you're so welcome, Mitch. Okay, you're so welcome, Jeff. Okay. What do you think of John Mayer's music? I think John Mayer is, is great. Um, I think he's a fantastic player. Very, very, very tasty. I don't love his songwriting, but that's just me personally. But I think he's a great player when he just starts noodling and stuff, blues. He's a badass player. Okay, great, 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 great. A black heart, uh, little giant. That's a great amp. Yes, it is. Folks, we're going to end it here in just one moment. Um, see if I can get... See if I can do any more here. I'm 62 years old and play Phil, Irish whistle and keyboards, uh, intermediate guitar, but there's something about guitar that just keeps me coming back. I wanted to sign up today, but my stupid credit card was declined, even though the balance is fine. Scream, I do hope uh, to get it working though, because you are a great teacher. Thank you so much, Rosemary, I really appreciate it. Here's the deal, folks. Those, listen, we're gonna sign off here in just a minute. Um, I've tried to answer as many questions as I can for you guys. Look. Obviously, I'm very passionate about what I do. I, I love guitar. Uh, at about 14 years old, I think I started playing. I think it was 14. Uh, I actually had an electric guitar earlier than that, and I, um, but I didn't, I didn't have the bug then. But when I was about 14, I really took to it massively and absolutely fell in love with the instrument. And, uh, and started taking lessons right away, and uh, several teachers went to college, uh, studied classical guitar, played in a bazillion bands, uh, played in the studio, done music in every form of fashion you could probably think of. Worship music, land live, rock, blues, uh, cover bands, uh, my own personal music, uh, alternate mu alternative, just all sorts. But nonetheless, I, as I, you obviously can tell that I'm passionate about teaching, I'm passionate about playing. And I specifically created lots and lots of online tools for folks. I've got books, I've got the store, um, I've got the Unstoppable Guitar System. That is our flagship product. Uh, what I mean by that is it has everything that's in my mind that I can think of. Anything that I can think of, I pour it out. And I, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I say, oh, I need to teach that. that. That helped me out so much. I remember that 10 years ago. I did, I did this and I got that. And then I say, and I put it on paper and I do my videos and I create a series or I create a video, um, usually a series. 
And, uh, and that's what the unstoppable guitar system is all about. It's unstoppable because number one, I don't stop putting stuff in it. And number two, it will keep you going. You won't stop because it's step by step. I'm gonna start at ground zero and I'm gonna become an amazing player. That's what this whole thing is about is because I've seen so many players stop because they got frustrated. Why do they get frustrated? Because they're biting off more than they can chew. That's the only reason, because the desire is in there. There's desire in there for you to play guitar. I bet everybody watching right now it is, because you wouldn't have stayed here for, what, three hours, almost four hours. So you've got the passion in you. You just need the roadmap. And that's what UGS is all about. It's a step-by-step -step roadmap. If you're a beginner, it's there for you. If you're intermediate, it's there for you. Advanced, it's there for you. And it keeps growing. We do live broadcasts every month. Um, I'm constantly updating the system. Right now we have over 68 hours in there, 560 plus videos, uh, as many jam tracks, five to 600 jam tracks, uh, personal emails from me. If you have questions, you're right there on the video. You say, yeah, but what about this at the, third, at the three minute mark? What about that? Da -da 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 -da. I answer those questions, boom. It's like you're st sitting there in the studio with me. It's the cheapest way that you possibly can do this. If you want to visit me here in Nashville, it will cost thousands of dollars to do the same exact thing, okay? And you're getting the same person answering the same exact questions, showing me the same exact way, you're right in front of the same person, the same guitar in the same studio. So uh, it's there for you. It's you can reach out and grab it right now. And today you can reach out and grab it for half of what we normally sell it for. Uh, it basically equates to 36 cents per lesson, 36 cents. That's about as cheap as we can do it, folks. Or that, that is the cheapest that we can do it, and but still make it available to you and the whole nine yards. So if you want that, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, head over to yourguitarsage.com slash live, download the PDF. Go back to the beginning of this video and watch the first hour if you want to learn how to play thousands of songs with just these five steps, no matter where you're at and you're playing. If you're starting from ground zero or you're an advanced player, if you learn these five steps and they don't take long to learn, go through them the way I teach in the PDF and the way that I taught you today in, in the one hour course. Everything, out, everything after that was all question and answer. Uh, watch that first hour, you're gonna get this stuff, okay? If you want to bite the bullet today, you want to jump in there, friends, it's, you got 30 days to get in there. I'm spitting all over the place. I'm hungry. Uh, it's 30 days that you have to get in there and, and say, this is too much. I'm learning too much. I'm becoming too good. No, I don't want this. I want to go back to playing mediocrity and wishing that I was a great guitar player. If you want to do that, then join the system and I'll give you your $200 back. Otherwise, get in the system, stay in the system, have a blast. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow together as folks have been in there since 2012. I mean, so we've had folks in there for five years. How about that? Uh, that folks that have had, what, what is that, five times 12 at 60 live broadcasts from me where they get their questions answered along with daily interactions with me, emails and everything else. So if you're looking to bite the bullet, friends, just to the right of the chat screen, you're gonna see there's a little yellow button, hit that. It's gonna give you your $200 off and you're gonna be able to get in there. Uh, for folks that are like, Eric, I'll never afford $200. I'll never spend $200 on the guitar. I just wanna be in that beginner to mediocre range. It's totally fine. There's no crime in that. We need tons of players in all different degrees of playing. We need mediocre players. We need folks that are gonna play by the campfire. We need all sorts, okay? And if you're interested in that, go to yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Basically, I'm giving you the first 30 lessons that I would teach all my students here in Nashville, but I'm giving them to you for a lot less than what you would pay. You'd pay about a thousand bucks for it or more uh, visiting me here in Nashville, but I'm handing those off to you. So even if you, look, if you didn't win the Strat today, that's okay. If you're not getting the course today, that's okay. If your credit card doesn't work today, that's okay. You've got until Wednesday, but if you're just like, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it until Wednesday, or I'm not gonna do it at all, You've got the free course for you. At least leave with those, okay? Go to there right now, open up another tab, yourguitarsage.com slash three zero, okay? It's gonna get you there. It's at least gonna get you on the right page. When you're watching my videos on YouTube, you're gonna understand this stuff like you never have before, okay? So do that. Um, any of the gear that I've talked about today, any gear recommendations that you may have, or any gear recommendations that you need, Acoustic guitars, electric guitars, amplifiers, pedals, picks, cables, all the whole nine yards. 
go to yourguitarsage.com slash gear. All of these links that I'm giving you right now are in the description of the video, so you don't even have to write them down. You just go into the video description and, and click on the link. Um, or go to kit.com slash yourguitarsage. My friends, you are rock stars. I cannot, I mean, it, it, it almost makes me feel guilty that I'm gonna go eat right now after doing this for, for nearly four hours, but I'm, I'm really, really hungry at this point. I didn't eat breakfast. Um, but um, on YouTube, we have 280 people watching. You guys are rock stars. Um, Facebook, we've got 10 people still. Is that right? I'm gonna refresh this and make sure. Maybe we don't have anybody there. Yeah, we got 10 people still there. And right here on yourguitarsage.com slash live, we've got 210 people. You guys rule. I love you. Thank you so much for staying here with me. You've made my Saturday. This is so much fun, and we've had a blast here. Take advantage of all the free stuff I'm giving you, folks. If you really want to want to, want to slice off heads like a ninja, get inside the Unstoppable Guitar System today. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, you've got $200 off, and you've got, that, uh, you've got a lifetime membership to learning guitar, and you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. I can't make it any easier for you. All right, get in there. I love you guys. Thank you so much. You rule. Jason, thank you so much. Chris, thank you so much. Much. And everybody who's joined us, magnificent questions today. You guys rule. Practice your guitar. Be kind to all beings. Don't trust the man. You know all that stuff. I'll see you in another video. I'll see you this week. Live broadcast on Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be doing that again. Doors will be closed on UGS, but um, I'll be teaching all sorts of good stuff still. Okay? Out. See you.